So I was recently reading about you. Uh, you got a call from Tiger a few Sundays before the Masters. This particular day, he calls me and he says, we're going to go to Augusta. Um, I'll pick you up at um, 6 a.m. and I'll have you back by 3 p.m. Can you do it? Four Play brought to you by Barstool Sports, presented by Chevrolet. Great American company doing the EV game, which we'll talk about more throughout the show. We're live from the Hilton Grand Vacations Tournament of Champions LPGA's kickoff event of the year. We're playing in the event. When this podcast comes out, that will be the day that I am playing. Uh, I've been on a Hilton Grand Vacation, actually. So is Trent. Me too. Recently. <laughs> yeah, we talked recently. about a lot on the show. Yeah, Hawaii was the, was the Grand Vacation. It was, yeah. That was the, um, yeah. We talk about it a ton on this show, and that was the... What was the name of the hotel you stayed at? Um, <sighs> Kanapali Beach Club? Hilton Grand Vacation? Yeah. Nice. I believe that's right. I went to Cabo when I went to Cabo last year. How was that? That was a Hilton Grand Vacation. It was grand. Some, it was fantastic. I'm trying to get some sun on my forehead, by the way. If you see my hat changing different areas. it's a good idea. Just last year, I got a really bad golfer's, like, Stuart Sink tan line. Yeah. I saw Scotty Scheffler got one in Maui. Oh, he we got did? a really bad one. I think just, like, that January 1st exposure to the sun when you, like, travel from. Well, I don't know what I'm doing. In I'm in the sun every day. Sure. Well, yeah, you are in the sun every day. But I'm like, if you're in a place where you're not really in the sun for a couple months, and then that first exposure... That's what, that could set you back for a long time. Just yeah. having a line across your fucking forehead. Trent had one of the more famous ones. What event did we go to, Trent? That was the Masters. We went to the Masters <laughs> tournament. Probably heard of it. First time we went to the Masters, I walked around <laughs> in a backwards hat the whole time. And I got such a bad, like, because it was a snapback. Oh, yeah. oh, you got the hole. I got the hole oh. on the top of my head. And we were staying with Dave. Dave was staying with us <laughs> that time. And he was like, get over here. I got to take a picture of you. And I was like, all right. And he just, there's a picture of me. I don't remember you having that fucking sunburn. Really? I really don't. Oh, dude. I remember that house. I remember doing the podcast on that bed. It was worse room. almost like the next week at the office. Didn't go away for a while. I'll pull it up he right had a, now. He had a, a, basically a reverse hat on his, just tattooed on his I can head. picture what it probably looks like. <laughs> I just can't picture looking at you with that. So we're at this Tournament of Champions, uh, like I said, LPGA event. Um, we're doing the relay race. So it's myself, Dan, Trent, Frankie. It is on uh, Golf Channel for, I believe, three hours a day, and then NBC on Sunday. Oh, Here's I a do picture remember of this. That's face. insane. You're so red. <laughs> um, dude, what we're about to do is is nuts. I mean, for anyone listening to us, we're playing our first event on TV. <laughs> With <the> green jacket. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> for our listeners, this is a fucking pinnacle moment in foreplay history i mean we are playing on television we're playing golf who knows if they'll show us but Riggs is playing thursday danny's playing friday trent's playing saturday i'm playing sunday we are picking up where the the guy before left off or one cumulative score um it is wow stable for it right is that stable for but no net so it's just that we're playing in the same we're basically playing against marty but the Fish. good part is that you can just pick up after double bogey yeah so it's it's zero points for a double Point for a bogey, two for, for a par, three for a birdie. We're not going to make anything beyond that. No. It's, it's whatever. Eagle, it's four, albatross, two, hole in one. Bunch of eagles. I mean. I can make an eagle. Yeah. This is fucking, go, this is That'd the real deal. Do you think we're on TV at all this week? Do you think that well, any of us hit a good enough shot? So we just got food, and over there was our good friend Alfonso Ribeiro. Yeah. And, you know, he's well, a veteran. miles an hour. He's a, he's a veteran of these things. And he said that they man. will only show nice. the good shots. They're not going to show the horrific shots. Do I think we get on in, under that criteria? No. If the producers have any brains... They would show every single bad shot that we have. I mean, that's the stuff that's, that's our YouTube channel. Yeah. That's our YouTube channel. Um, I think that a couple of us are going to get on. I think there's going to be a shot. There might be a par three if someone sticks it right next to the hole on like a on an iconic par three out here at this golf course, Lake Nona. Um, I think we're going to do it. I think I think we're going to get a couple shots. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about the producers slash cameramen knowing that we're so bad and wanting to show us yeah. and knowing that it'll get like somewhat of a reaction on social media. So that might be our way in. Yeah. If Hilton Grand Vacations has any fucking brain, they're going to put out whatever clip that they can because everyone's just going to roast us. Yeah. I, you know, that's kind of the thought process behind we're bringing here. us down here, I would, I would think. Yeah. And then the other thought process is we got a bunch of interviews. So on this show, people are going to hear um, more baseball than they've ever heard 
but in an incredible format. We have um, John Smoltz and we have Kevin Millar back to back. Smoltzy has phenomenal stories about playing golf with Tiger Woods, how into other sports he is beyond baseball, and then we get into pitching. And man, when you get that guy going on pitching and on the little intricacies of it and his strategies and now, you know, the game now versus then. Hall of Fame pitcher, starter, closer, World Series winner, Braves, Mets, everything about this guy is like, he's just a part of my childhood. Yeah. Yankees, late 90s, 96, 97, 98, 99. They're playing the Braves every single year. It was the back and forth. Braves win one, Yankees win three. It was fucking awesome to just be able to look across this little area we have set up here and just see that the guy from TV when I was younger who got me into, like, he was a part of why I'm into sports so much. That whole rivalry when I'm seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven years old. Fuck, man. The, listening to him tell stories was awesome. I like, don't think I'm ever going to get used to um, interviewing guys like that. Like, if, if, if yeah. I was going to get used to it, I, it would have happened by now because we've interviewed so many people. But when John Smoltz is sitting across from you, you I... I'm with you, like Frankie. That I grew up watching those those teams play. The Braves were motherfuckers in the '90s, and he's just sitting right there, and I'm still giddy about it. I don't think I'll ever get used to it. It's very strange. Um, sorry, I was distracted by Jake Bassett and just horrible text in the middle of us trying to do a yeah, show. Yeah, we're doing the show, and he said breaking news, and it's just like wasn't breaking news at all. It was just like something stupid. But that's yeah, just a classic. Again, no one's ever more confidently right, and then turns out to be wrong about <laughs> yeah. anything than. Jake Bass. So that's that's He's again we're trying to record the show, and then we got other important things coming. Um, so that again, well, I will Kevin say Moore. if you're not sticking around for this interview, you're fucking idiot. Because at one point he dropped. You know, I played with Tiger 40, 35, 40 times. I mean, anyone that can say that. That's he's, more he's, than most professional golfers ever. He's legitimately good pals with Tiger, and he the stories he, are insane. And he had a front row seat to peak Tiger. This wasn't just oh they became friends in the last five years. He was friends with Tiger in two thousand between two thousand and two thousand nine when he was on top of the world. All time, all time stories from him uh, about playing with Tiger, and then he starts chirping Kevin Millar, who's getting ready to go on about them facing each other, and then Kevin Millar, and him talking about, no offense, Frankie, him talking about the Sox breaking the curse, coming back from three zero, and that entire saga and what that meant and to be on it was, I mean, it was spine tingling. Yeah, it's really cool. It is cool to like. I mean, enough years have gone by. Yankees won two thousand nine. It's not like we have our own curse now. Ever since then, but. Um, yeah, it was a devastating time in my life. Like, peak peak of me. You were like 12. A, dude, it was fucking... Two, yeah, the Yankees, I never knew what losing was. Yeah. Like, yeah, they lost to the Marlins. Yes, they lost to the Diamondbacks. But, like, they also were in the World Series in both of those. And it was like, all right, like, you can't win every single year. They won four out of the last five, like, whatever. And then all of a sudden, it's like the Red Sox are nothing. We just beat them last year with fucking Aaron Boone. And then now we're up three nothing. Mariano's on the fucking bump. No chance we lose this. Lose four in a row. You kidding me? No way. Like I was. I remember sitting there being like, "There's no way." Like that's like I wanted to throw like a flag like in football. Like like, that's impossible. You can't. We Red Sox can't beat the Yankees. We were talking about Riggs and I were kind of whispering. Is that the greatest championship of all time? You're not going to get me to say it, but. I mean, it's got to be up there, yeah. 2019 Masters is what Riggs said, maybe up there. Well, I was, yeah, I was making a little golf joke because we're kind of... No, yeah, I, but it I wasn't. mean, there's <laughs> definitely people who can uh, retort, but... There might be a football one there somewhere. I don't oh, know. dude, the, the drought, the curse. Yeah, it's tough. Aaron to Boone. And then, yeah, down 3 nothing. Like, I, I mean, I'm, again, people will argue that till... It's a little recency bias for me, but, like, the Messi World Cup was up Messi there. Messi World Cup's pretty epic. With yeah. just the storylines. I know you're never <clears throat> saw a guy. But the storylines and him trying to, it's his final World Cup, and him trying to go for that and being the greatest and playing in the final against his teammates that are in France. I, like, that was up there, I thought, for that game, how good that game was. And, and the, the videos I'll after. I'll tell you what, at the time when it happened, the um, the 2011 Dallas Mavericks was a big one. Oh, when they beat LeBron. Because yeah. I was really hoping LeBron would never get a title at yeah. that point. Everyone was like, if he, what if he just goes to Miami and never wins a title? <laughs> yeah. So that Mavs team that. Dirk and Jason Terry. And that's a good one. All those, that's Berea. Not, J.J. Berea. J.J. Berea. That was a great one. But I really do think 2004 Boston Red Sox is number yeah, one. Yeah, because you just you can't like you can't replicate no. all the years of the drought to anything else. Like the messy thing. It's not like the World Cup had missed uh, an all-time player not winning a World Cup in 100 years. Like, like something yeah. about the fact that the Red Sox hadn't won since like 1918. The curse, the billion, the the, uh, the 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 
they weren't the Billy Goat. Oh, it was Curse of the Babe Ruth. I don't yeah. know why the fuck I didn't say, think of that. Babe Ruth, they trade him to the Yankees. They never win one since they trade him. It's fucking, all the history is insane. 27 rings, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like David Goliath. It's Boston, a, New York, the yeah. accents. You just, you can take a train from each place to it. It's right next to each other. It's a fucking. About as good as there's ever been. It has to be. It's about as it good as It unfortunately has to be. And then we've got um, other big interviews uh, coming. We've got on uh, Tuesday, we've got Michael Waltrip, who, who, He's a trip. <laughs> He's a trip. He's a trip. He's one of the funniest interviews without expecting it, maybe, that the we've fuck's ever that done. that guy staring at? Yeah, we get, Just you know, fucking we're eye. like, I we, get eye this, fucked. we get this list of names that's, you the know, who we're going to looking at? You want to go fight him? No, man. I looked like he wanted to fight me. Some guy drove by and just stared at me, and I like gave him a head down. He did not crack. Go over there, bro. I think I need Call to. Call him to the carpet. I don't like the way that guy looked at me. Um, Represent your dukes. Let's go. I, at some point, I have to stick, stick my chest I out. Would, I can't be fucking pushed around like that. I would love to watch you throw a punch. <laughs> that would make my life. You ever, have th- you ever hit anybody? I've only thrown one punch, and I sucker punched again. <laughs> <laughs> but he I also mean, punched one of my friends. Uh, the that, least surprising This was like a night out? I punched my buddy Big Rob right in the face because I stole one of my friends stole one of my friends stole the kid's hat they were like he was dancing in the middle it was that one of the we were at the Hofstra bars and it was like dude we may have yeah we may have been like 17 in these you know what I mean it's just one of those bars yeah. like you just get into and fucking some, someone takes the kid's hat he was in the middle of our crew he turns around looking for someone who took his hat he looks at Big Rob punches him in the fucking tooth that tooth is still falling out to this day that was, <laughs> hasn't come out yet 13 no 13 years he's been dealing with this fake tooth comes coming out. in it comes out oh, in a sandwich he, he doesn't smile when he um, when he works but when he eats a ham and cheese sandwich the tooth gets stuck in there it's fucking hilarious but um, so Big Rob gets punched and then I'm behind him and I'm like, oh my god, this is a moment right now. I have to do something. So I kind of just like side swiped him on his temple, did nothing to him, <laughs> and then everyone jumped in, and it was it got bad. But yeah, and then we get kicked out, and the whole thing happens. But I remember saying like, I punched, I punched him too. I hit him. Yeah. I, I was showing like my little knuckle. I had like yeah. a, an abrasion on it. You, you got were involved. There. You were I, got, I had to. Yeah, you but had, I you wish I could like roll call you. You were there. You know, I wish I could have like right. turned him around and punch. I always think about. Um, you, you watch the videos where they say, like, if you punch, like, up the nose, like, maybe you can go right into their brain. You kill him. You want to kill yeah, a guy. Yeah. I, I'd love to see if I could, like, break his nose, though, by, like, hitting it sideways or something. <laughs> what you talked about, I think, was how you kill someone, isn't it? Is that... Is, I thought oh, it was yeah. a broken nose. Is that a kill? Bro, it's... It, well, the way that I always heard it was the nose bone goes into the brain. Okay, yeah, that's something I would like to try. Out. Definitely you, kill let, that, let that guy, you know, stare at Big Rob. Does. You don't think I'm going to send his bone into his brain? <laughs> From Bolta Blazer, Equinox to Silverado, Chevy EVs are for everyone, everywhere. You guys have a pickup truck this week. We do have a pickup truck this week. It's nice to throw all of our clubs in the back of a pickup truck Chevy. At the end of the day, you feel like a man. You're, you're, you're heading to your, your place of work. For us, it's a golf course, luckily, blessfully. I can actually see you being a Chevy Silverado guy. I got to get in one, man. I, I know. can see you being Dude, one. we just went to, I was saying, we had to actually rent a car going to this cabin because we didn't have enough stuff to put everyone's stuff. We didn't have enough room to put everyone's stuff in. That's how bad it is. We had to rent a Chevy just to get everyone up to this fucking cabin in Pennsylvania. So I need to get one. My crew needs a pickup truck. Well, we're going to get you a Silverado because... You can, uh, the uh, electric vehicles are, ver- are available now. You can buy now the Bolt EV and the Bolt EUV, or you can reserve now the Silverado EV. I saw what Trent just did. He almost just kicked Alex Bush in the ear again. We were taking a picture earlier for everyone listening after, and I, I, I jumped up real quick. I wasn't really paying attention to my footsies, and I just smoked one of the mics that was on the ground, and Alex yeah. Bush had the headphones in, and he just goes, ah! Blow his eardrums out. <laughs> the guy's back. Uh, yeah, there's a guy with the children. Still have those children. She's crying. <laughs> what a land. This People guy's. are going to hear about that guy there before they hear about him originally. That's right. <laughs> that's, time travel. That's, that's time session. travel. That's oh, tough. Uh, no, that's time travel. Ev- though that is time travel. EVs are affordable. You don't have to be rich to have an EV with an established full line brand that you've come to know and love and trust like Chevrolet. We're offering multiple EV vehicles with the volume, the variety, in the value customers all over this beautiful planet have come to expect Chevy EVs for everyone everywhere. Before we end this uh, this ad, I want to talk about real quick time travel. I forgot to say about it, talk about it in the podcast, but mm-hmm. um, the um, the boys 
Bustin' with the Boys had someone on. I didn't really. I was just reading all the captions of whoever they had on. And they were talking about time travel. And the guy said that um, he doesn't think that you – because, like, time travel would be fourth dimension. And, like, anyone in three dimension can't, like, access that. So we'd have – whatever. He was getting into all that. And then he said he doesn't think that you can time travel back to just a random time. You'd have to have a time machine to start. And that's when you can time travel back to that time machine. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So like if we created one now, maybe in 50 years you can come back to this one now. But you can't just like pop out of thin air into like the 1500s because there was nothing there to go back to, right? Yes, I, I how does understand that. How does that wrap around your head? I, you need two time machines. No. I would, I would assume that like oh, you well, need right. the base one to like be created at some point to go, right? Like wouldn't, isn't that what the time travel like would a, be? Like the fireplaces in Harry Potter? Gotta, I mean, yeah, go it made more one. sense. Like time travel doesn't really make sense to me because it's not real, but yet, but like that made the most sense to me that you would need to like go back to the thing. Right. So our, our burden isn't making one to go back in time. It's just to make one. Right. So people can come back in time now. Yes. That's, Selfless. I think that's what he was saying. Again, I was just kind of like watching sense. the captions. If he didn't in say that, time travel. that's my take on it. If he did not say that, but if he did, I agree with him. Chevy, Chevy, start working on Chevy it. My baby. take on it's that EVs are for everyone, everyone. They are, Chevy. no matter what time you're in. Michael Waltrip, uh, so NASCAR legend. He talks about getting into fights with people. Uh, he gets into the uh, the nuts and bolts, no pun intended, of NASCAR, which we all found fascinating because we don't know. It's almost like one of the earlier episodes of Drive to Survive when you're like learning about this new thing that other people love. And once he starts to explain it, you'd be like, oh, I see how people love this because it's this part's fucking fascinating. Uh, and he was a trip. Half the things he said, I still don't know if he was he just made up or there's if he was a, serious. Yeah. His delivery is insane. I think, yeah, yeah, it's a very funny delivery. Uh, there's a good chance that like 75% of the interview he made up. Yeah. So, um, Michael Waltrip, he's yeah. coming up Tuesday. And then I sat down this week, um, and because everything we've got going on, we're at this event, we're going to put it out, this out, I believe, next Thursday. But I sat down with Brandel Chambly and Gary McCord in Scottsdale. And the stories that those two have playing together, Gary McCord has because he's unchained now. He doesn't care. Uh, he's not really employed anywhere with his TV gigs. He doesn't have to be careful. And he told just phenomenal stories about being at the Masters on the broadcast, things that would go on during the broadcast, uh, people potentially cheating that they catch on camera on the broadcast, all kinds of amazing stuff. So uh, so that's coming out next Thursday. So we got a lot going on. Um, and then Barstool Classic. So yep. today, if you're looking um, on social media, the Barstool Classic schedule is released, and then you will be able to register February 1st, which is a Wednesday, wow. at 12 p.m. Eastern time, uh, is when BarstoolClassic.com, so you're going to go BarstoolClassic.com, you'll be able to register. So a lot of people have been asking. We are releasing that schedule today, um, so look at that. We're going to put it out on social media. Uh, that's coming out, but we got 25 stops, uh, a couple big ones. This is year five? <clears throat> on the list, this is year five. Year five, what a fucking time to be alive that we have the fifth year of a tour. It's basically, a, it's an amateur tour at this point. 25 events. I'm sure more will get added. Like, we just added the Saguaro Scramble. That's happening in Arizona. But, like, this is fucking insane that we're about to embark on a 25-event tour again. What did we do, 27 last year? We did 27 because we added a couple Canadian stops last amazing. year. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. The lineup that we have this year is insane. Again, just like we said for the Saguaro Scramble, and it rang true. If you're not there at, are we going to do 12 o'clock? Is that what we're going to be doing? On 12 February Eastern. 1st? Noon Eastern on February 1st. If you're not at your computer, you have a couple days now to get your, your ducks in order. Ducks in row? Ducks in a row. Ducks in a row. T- call your buddies. Make it's the text messages. Send out the emails. Figure out who your groups are going to be. Figure out who your partner is going to be. You have a week. You have a, a bunch of time to do this. You got about two weeks. You got about two weeks to figure this out. Make sure that you're on that website because it, sometimes it crashes. Sometimes fucking so many people are on it. We are going to be ready this year for you to sign up at 12 o'clock on February 1st. Here's the issue that people run into is they're not ready with the information. This is what, this is what I'm saying. You need to have you and your partner's names and emails. You need to have your gin handicap numbers. And you need to have a team name is another thing I believe that we asked for. We'll clarify everything you need next week. But what happens, people are ready at like noon and then they don't realize that they need this information. So they text their buddy, their buddy's in a meeting. They don't sign up till 12.07. Bang. 
sold out. So make sure your ass is fucking ready. We're going to keep following up because we got a few weeks until that happens where the Barstool Classic schedule is out now. So uh, midday today, if you're listening to this podcast, it's probably out already. But check social media. We're going to put the schedule all over the place. You go to barstoolclassic.com and see it. And then make sure you're ready um, for that website. Um, okay. Yeah. Let me check my list here. Oh, another thing. Uh, I'm going to Duke UNC, UNC game. That's, That's going to be fun. Very At Cameron, right? At Cameron. Which is like when, when you when you go to the schools, you like sleep outside for like two days. Chefskyville. That's a whole thing, yeah. I'm pretty blown away. It's something that I will say once I started going to Piners a few years ago, since those schools aren't that far, you see the gear all the time. You start thinking, like, I'd love to go to Duke UNC again. But it is the time of year that it happens. is not golf season necessarily. But I'm doing a trip uh, to the house for a few days. My brother and I and a couple of buddies are going down. We're going to work on the house a little bit. We're going to play a little bit of golf. And Mr. Pashley hit us up and said, I got a few extra tickets. Is there any way you guys would like to go to Cameron? Of course we like to go to Cameron. So yeah. we're going to Duke UNC. I believe it's February 4th. I will say, if anybody from any of those uh, that Cameron that works there is listening, we are one ticket short. So I could use one more ticket. Good luck. It doesn't seem that easy to get. Probably the hardest ticket to get. In my, There's only like 6,000 seats in the whole stadium. In my scouring of the internet. How are those teams this year? I know. Not great. That's really? one thing that stinks. I don't know how bad they are. I didn't really look. But I one when Pash invited us, which is incredibly nice one of my better friends love tom pastor to death when he invited us he did say it's a bummer that the teams stink this year now, i don't know if that means they stink relative to what they usually are i don't know if that means they're actually not great and i also don't think it really matters uh it would obviously help if they're like one and two in the country but going to something like that i've heard the environment the rivalry the whole deal is as good as it gets so i'm extremely jacked up about that and i could find one more ticket that'd be great yeah that's a bucket list thing for a sports fan mm-hmm. it's that's like a Michigan big guy Ohio from State. unc did he graduate they got a big guy with a nice fat ass on their team, and you could tell he he has like he's like fuck. What's his fucking name, man? I watched him during the tournament last year. He's a problem on the um, boards. I, I just looked. It doesn't appear that Duke is ranked, and I don't know if North Carolina. Well, is this ranked. is the first year of the post Coach K era. Frank, uh, John Shire's at the Hansbrough wheel. Graduated a long time ago. No, I'm not talking about Tyler Hansborough. You Luke May. <laughs> no. Sean May. Stop. Uh, who were the brothers that went uh, the? Uh, all of the Plumleys? Yeah, the Plumley brothers? The Duke, those are Duke Oh, guys. Armando, uh, ba- uh, I never know how to say his name, last name, Backett, Backot, this guy, Armando. Oh, I don't know who that is. He's a fucking problem, number five. I guess he still plays for them. He's right, really well, I'll good. I'll see him. There yeah. you go. Tell you all about him. Dude, he's really good. Really? You're going to love him. I'm yeah. Really? Backett, Backot. You have yeah. a rooting interest? Yeah, Pash is a Duke guy. Uh, he's got some Duke, t- so I'm, I'm going to be rooting for Duke. And my friend JR, who's going, is a Duke fan, weirdly. I still don't know why. But he's always been a Duke fan. We've actually always made fun of him for it. But if I'm going and we're going with Pash and he's a Duke guy and he invited us, I'm not going to not root It is funny. Every friend group has a Duke fan. I had a Duke fan in my friend group growing up. And we're like, why? I think I know why because they're so good. Same as having like a Cowboys fan. Yeah. Yeah. That's very similar. Or a Yankees fan. Or a Yankee fan. That's right. Right. True. It's one of those. So, yeah, I think we're all going to be. Yes. It's a fat ass. We're all gonna be on the fat, Duke train. I'm telling you something. Oh, yeah. When he's like getting boards and he's powerful. like backing people in, he's got a, he's got he's he's double cheeked up inside Cameron. He's got a caboose. Very powerful. Um, yeah. And the other the other thing I'll say is, as we came all the way down here, I was, I was there were a couple LPGA players we thought we might be able to get. Thought we were getting Nellie Quarter, who we talked about is on Team Taylor Made. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to get her, but she's on our list. I would like to get her on the show soon. For sure, that'd be nice. Superstar, be great. That's something. I'm she became on my a radar. superstar in the last she's a superstar. 12 months. She, I think she was the only athlete, in the, or maybe not athlete, but she's definitely only the golfer on the Forbes 30 under 30 list. Is that right? Yeah, which I thought was really cool. That is cool. So, yeah, she she's, deserves it. Yeah, and she uh, she got her, her ducks in a row this, this offseason with the Nike deal and with TaylorMade. Back to back. Yeah. Shout out to the, the toilets at the hotel. Just want to oh, give those a shout out. Glassing. We talked about them last year, and they're the most high-tech toilets in the world. Seat warmers, they'll spray warm water right up your asshole. I sat on it for about eight minutes. And they dry night. it, too. They'll dry it too. It's a safety risk of how much water you're putting up your ass. I mean, I feel I feel like I'm floating. Yeah. I um I just want to give them a shout out. I'm sure we shouted them out on last year's podcast. Um, but it's good to come back to Orlando. Oh, that, no, dude, I've been blasting my fucking asshole. That's what I was saying. To you. High pressure, pulsating, got a pulsating, uh, pulsating. One. The pulsating one's great because it you stops for a second. In those, with those oh, I'm talking. Dude, you have to. So, no. so much, to this, so much mean? so that it started to like swallow you know, your pride. You know when you get like a massage? Yeah, or, just, you know I when a massage is on your back and your back starts to itch? Like my ass started to itch. It was hitting it so hard. You you won't let any water go up there. 
Nope. That's that's immature. That's like wearing shorts. You know, Come on. When you wear, my, I'd be when, hiding those legs when too. You wear po- when you wear pants, you blast your asshole in the bathroom. That, that's, that should All be the other right. way around. <laughs> really, though. Give it a try. Give dude. it a try. <laughs> it's a fucking treat. <laughs> just, and don't, you know, it's water's like, warm. You don't have uncomfortable sensation. It's, no, it's not, great. though. It's, it's like great. the first second's like, <laughs> You guys and do this over fucking on Behind there. the scenes, guys? I do. Yeah, I texted them immediately. I sat down and was like, I haven't gotten up the last 10 Brendan minutes. Brendan legit was like, I'm not getting off this thing. Brendan now, you don't said, even need to blast. You just need to sit on the warm seat. Bro. Brendan said the way you sit, like when you get to a hotel and there's there's a bed and there's a couple chairs, the way you just like sit in the chair and hang out, he's using the toilet that way. <laughs> like, I didn't have to shit. I didn't have to piss. I was like, I'm just going to go sit there, text for a little bit. So you sat there for like 20 minutes, only dropped like one turd, and everything else was about the enjoyment of the technology. It might feel like a violation for the first half a second, and then the rest is bliss. You just got to let go. Uh Uh-oh, we got... How's it going? We got children coming by. We got children that just rolled up, so we're going to stop that segment. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to do a photo. This guy's got... uh, There you go. Two little children. Very small child. We are. He's got a tiny child, and then he's got... You're live on the podcast. If you listen to this show, you're going to know what kind of conversation you just rolled up to and why we stopped when the children got along. He has another wagon with another child, (laughs) and we were just talking about shoving water up your assholes. Appreciate it. We're glad to be here. Love Florida. Now that they're gone, that thing fucking All right, we can move on, but just like... What? I think blast your ass. Man. All right, we can move on, but Riggs, if it you don't want to, getting, you don't have to. But, if but, you, it, if you but you know how it, it's a, it is a getting over the hump thing. Like, oh, I can't get over that. that I'm not going to get over that. The first hit is definitely you feel you feel like you want to kind of like. See, I'm not your ready fingers. for that. You want to twinkle your fingers a little bit. You wanna, I'm not ready for that. We're not going to force you. Do you do this? See, you don't no. blast your ass. Well, I just no. figured there had I to be somebody. Called it a bodega else. the other Fucking day. Nerd, he did. Dude. Yeah. He tried to call it a bidet, and he said it's not a bodega. bodegas or a bodega. It's well, a bidet. Now, right. That's bidet. actually interesting. So you want to be in the same category as Bush? All right. On this so instance, yes. Yeah. Nothing. But do you want to be in the same category? I actually as thought him? about doing. Tran, I thought about doing a segment where we just read out loud Alex Bush's most recent tweets over the last twenty. Well, Alex oh, Bush. No. Speaking of which, um, but talk to us about this guy that just retired. This Call of Duty guy. How come everyone was sucking his cock? I mean, in uh, in Call of Duty and esports, he's like Tom Brady. Like he's the been the guy who's like lasted the longest and been the most successful. And so, from the inception of professional Call of Duty, he's been like number one. Now, how many years? There's, has there's, that there's been? like two or three guys that are like they're the, the top, like the goats. But I saw pictures of him and Nate They looked like they were children. They played together. Now, yeah. how many years has this been going on? How many years has he played? Or yeah, like how many years he's, has he been? He's, the... he's probably eight to ten years. And he's re- able to retire already. The guy's like, got the bag. Like Twenty nine thirty. Fuck. Is that insane? What's his name? Loaded money. Scump. Scump. Loaded. Yeah. I mean, he's got to be. Fucking. But hell, he was dude. saying because I was talking about it this morning because I was also be. curious about it. He said he's uh, retiring from competitive. So okay. he's still, still going to stream. Yeah, he's still going to like stream. Right. And he's technically there. Like, wow. The real right COD now, so. goat, and it isn't even a question. The game has huge shoes to fill without the king. Can I ask? I you mean, one? everyone was posting about. Yeah. It. Totally. It was yeah, all over the place. What makes him so good? I mean, he was just first of all, he was successful, you know, playing. But like, he, pioneer? he, yeah, kind of like a pioneer. Like he grew the game when it came to like people caring about um, that don't, you know, aren't as into the game. He's an Arnold Palmer figure. Like, people that don't watch gaming, some people have heard of. Him. I guess, like, technically, why is he so good? What, what do you the mean? most headshots, the most kills. Like, does he have all the like he's just the stats? Disgusting. Like, yeah, he's just, yeah, but disgusting. That's just nasty. That's a, he's, just, a, <laughs> he's just nasty. Like, I want to know because I actually am interested in this because he I also saw played this, like there. There's different like I guess they call them roles, which is like a position. He played pretty much all of them. So okay. Because I, I saw everyone posting about it too, Frankie, and I am interested in that world because I do love following Alex Bush's tweets. Amazing. He'll get riled up about something that oh, yeah. no one on my feed has any idea is even happening, but he'll start losing it. But I always am interested in like a guy who's that good. I just want to know why. Like we were talking, to, we talked to John Smoltz and Kevin Millar, and they're talking about pitch selection and you know how to stay a great hitter. I just in that world of video games, I don't fully understand Dude, they're what's separate. Better. It's also they're like the, better. the longevity because the game changes every year. I mean, now they're on a two year uh, two year cycle, but the the Call of Duty game like changes you know every year. So in right. Different games, different styles, and he just continued to be really, really I'm good. Like in every in every that. crew, there's always the a guy that's the best at Call of Duty. It's like imagine that yeah. times a billion. Like this guy's just better than everyone else. When he goes out there, he yeah. kills the most people. He knows all the things. He knows everything about the game. He's fastest. His hand eye coordination's insane in the game. And the games just, they had like five, six, seven years ago were nothing compared to now. Like when it comes to how people play, right? The, game. It's the ability so to adapt. There were five person teams. Now there's four person teams. It's like 
now it's you know there's a lot of games like the last two games where like all about these cracked out movement and you see like these clips online about you know these 16 year olds are... turn your fucking mic off you no I, I, just I'm, I'm just trying to tell you that fucking it's completely John's fucking different <laughs> fucking listen to this are nerd all shit fans absolute <laughs> morons hilarious how stupid these comments have gotten before we get uh, you before we put you back into the shadow realm what's with the bills you like the bills right now uh, like the Bills much chances. better than I did Sunday. They barely won on Sunday. Yeah, they barely won. But the uh, Bengals have like one healthy offensive lineman right now. I'm not Joe Burrow and like his hotness and just like they have just the, best the vibes of the Bengals don't scare you right now. I think the Bills beating themselves scare me more. Not that the ba- I mean the Bengals are. This know, game's really, really in good. Buffalo. Yeah, it's in Buffalo. Do you think Demar Hamlin's going to show up to the game? Yeah. Holy shit! He's that's been in, that's they quite said the he's emotional been in the lift. facility like every day this week. Dude, that is going. That to, that's a pop sick. that. That's a pop that you yeah. can't replicate yeah, with Alex anything Bush else. Had the same conversation this morning. I asked him about Scump yeah. and I asked him about Demar Hamlin. Really? We yeah. literally did. I wasn't there. Yeah. In, no, like, I know. Oh yeah, I know. It was just me and Alex. <laughs> that's fucking yeah. weird. It was. weird. He's gonna get a fucking pop, man. Yeah. I mean, can I can I place on the Barstool Sportsbook like first score absolutely is gonna be the Bills probably like a kickoff return? No, it'll probably be like a seventy-five yard fucking touchdown. I you could just bet Bill's money line. Yeah. What's, What's going on in your money? life, Brendan? <laughs> I do a lot of traveling for this golf podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had a lot of YouTube videos. It's yep. true. We uh we do have a lot of YouTube videos. Yeah. You're missing, yeah, your, we, you're missing your men's league uh, playoff, right? I'm missing a men's league yeah, playoff game. That's the sacrifice. And you're the goalie? a lot of luck, stress luck on being bruisers. like a really good men's league goalie because every team is looking for one. Um, like how many teams are you on? I could be on a bunch. Right. I just – don't have a ton of time. Are guys texting you all the time? Like, hey, yeah, you available like tonight? A, the league will text you. Yeah. You'll be like, oh, XYZ needs you to play. Or For people that don't know, we call him Bug. We call him E-Bug sometimes. People who have listened for a long time know. But that is because he is an emergency backup goalie for the NHL. For the Islanders, yeah. he was. Was. So this that's the type the schedule of talent took him we're away talking from about. That. That's a shame. Our YouTube Sorry. videos. Where, uh, this is on Long Island, your league? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I live in Queens, but... Long Island's not far. Probably 35 minutes each game. So, so when yeah. I moved back this to New York this summer, if I moved out east. You want to skate? Good skate. Let's go. I want to skate again. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. Summers are better, too. You got to get, right. get in that summer league with, like, Charlie well, McAvoy. And I was all those. in that one. Yeah, yeah, you were in the Sunny Milano. Yeah, yeah, in Long Beach we played. I heard, that, I heard that's elite. Yeah, you played with really them. Good. Yeah, yeah. I was like, they're goalie. Yeah, that's insane. That's yeah. the one you got to get into. Adam I got to get into that. That sounds fun. Adam Fox was on the team. It was cool. Yeah. Because they're all back for the summer. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. You could, you could so when you when you're an emergency backup goalie, you're sitting in the stands. You're in a suit, or like you're just like chilling. Yeah, I had to wear yeah like clothes that were good enough to wear to like a press conference. So then you're sitting there. A goalie comes down. Like he he gets there's a scrum around the net. The goalie's down. He's stretching. They take him into the locker room. Are you immediately heading to the locker room? You get out of your seat and you walk down to the locker room. You get a text. Like, you get a okay, text. Yeah, I don't know what position that person holds within the organization, but you get a text and they're like. You know, head towards the locker room or whatever. You start getting dressed. So you now you're putting, out. you're in an NHL locker room. You're putting on pads to now potentially enter the game. Yeah, <laughs> this is it's the craziest mm-hmm. thing in all no sports. Sport How many that. times did that happen? Mm-hmm. Never. So you, you never, never actually got dressed? Never had to get dressed. My That's fr- fucking bullshit. That sucks. It does I mean, it suck, never happen. but I know how rare it happens, and I'm not a hockey guy, but I remember when it, it did happen like once last year, maybe, or two yeah, years I'm ago. Saying, a couple years ago, it was Carolina dressed, Hurricane. Like, even yeah, just getting dressed I mean, he's getting dressed. Cool. It just happened at the Winter Classic. Some yeah, guy the guy the got room. dressed in the locker room, and they're like, holy shit. He sat shit. in the dugout. He sat if in the, the Red next Sox guy dugout. comes I'll, out, he's in. I'll be honest. I think that rule's kind of bullshit. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, I think that that should just be like, if you don't have another goal, you don't have another goal. Like, that's on you. Play with six? Right. Why do you get just, to just... Because if you're allowed to dress 20 players, hmm. right? So why would you be able to just dress another one in the middle I know, of the game? It is it's like almost like a stupid unfair. rule. And the idea that you could be the emergency backup goalie for both, both teams. teams that are present. So if you're a diehard right. Rangers fan, you go on for the Islanders and you have no care for fucking society. Yeah. Whoops. And you're playing in like the last <laughs> game of the season. The, the Islanders oh, no. need two more points to get in. You've got fucking money on the game or whatever. I don't know. It's probably imagine allowed, Imagine but. that scenario where... He or Bug goes in for oh the Islanders, oh and you know that he's a diehard oh Rangers fan. I actually think <laughs> we, you guys don't work together anymore. That should be illegal, though. The, the scenario we've just posed should not be allowed to ever come true. I wouldn't ever, one, have enough money on a game to like for it to be significant, but I also wouldn't ever want to embarrass myself. Right, it'd be such yourself. a cool moment to be the guy like, that yeah, just, you went in and made saves. Like, it'd be awesome. And it's just like, oh, I let these goals in to win like 300 bucks. The one that happened in Tor- was it right. Toronto? Okay. Was it the one that happened in Toronto? 
Yeah, he David wasn't Harris. a Toronto fan. Oh, he was a Toronto fan, but he went for the other team. Yeah, right? he beat the he was the he Toronto, beat the Leafs. Yeah, he beat the Leafs. Die hard Leafs fan. Skates with them at practice. Skates with them in practice. Yeah. He's like their guy that like they shoots on. Beat them. That's he awesome. He had a ton of saves. Yeah, yeah, I think it, yeah. I think Fucking he let in his awesome. first two shots and then wound up making like seven <laughs> or have been nine saves. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, That's wild. very cool. It is an interesting thing in sports that is in no other sport. No. Imagine there being like an emergency backup closer in baseball and like it's like a dude that's sitting in section 225 that like throws like seven miles. Why don't they just, just make like, like an outfield guy or a, you know, guy who's defenseman, why don't they just make him go in goal? Well, right. Well, that's, that's what, what baseball saying. does it's when like, like you run yeah, out of pitchers, the outfield position pitches. player pitches. They yeah. say or it's like injury. If... They're just like, this guy's never even come close to these movements before. Like, why would we risk our five yeah, million dollar man? I'm not even saying How that. It should net? be like if you're not right, it should be like you're playing six on five and then if you're not goalie or or like if you're that if you're so nervous that like two goalies isn't enough, you should have to dress three. Yes, and I take agree. like that's crazy. Yeah. That's a rule that I'll enact when I'm the commissioner. And the other one is I've brought this up on Twitter. I don't know if I brought it up here, but that you um, if you have a power play, if you have a power play and that and you get it with like 50 seconds left in a period, and you're crushing this team, you're cycling the puck in the offensive zone, thing? and then all of a sudden the fucking period ends, and then. The next period starts and it's a center ice face off. That drives me fucking crazy. That time elapsing, even though the other team didn't clear the puck, makes you come out of the zone. So every time you get this power play at the end of the period, it's almost like the defensive team or the team that took the penalty is getting an advantage just because of the time they took it. So like they're getting a free clear when maybe their guys are tired and all this stuff. You know what I mean? I know. So like the next period I see should how start with a period, the puck in that zone as a face off. You still have to win the face off. It'd be like in soccer if they called half when you have a corner kick or something. It's crazy. Right. It's like in reality, they let that, that mm-hmm. rush play out. Right. And yeah. Or let saying. the period go on until the power play is over and then take it off on the other side you know what i mean let the momentum go power plays are all about momentum so i don't know it's a it's like a weird thing to get mad the about the flip side of that is you get excited when you have a fresh sheet ice yeah. for a power play yeah but i always feel like it takes a second to like get going Definitely. You win the face off yeah. you're like you're back in your own zone now you're trying to do an entry yeah. and that other team just killed 15 seconds just because the clock ran down yeah so I don't know. It's just it's, no, I know, it drives I know, me crazy. I never really thought of that. They've debated the e-bug thing for a long time. I think the NHL kind of likes the story. Like they just True. like the buzz when it happens. It's so you know rare because they never get really, it. Yeah. Super rare. So I think they like the buzz. It's like oh X Y Z's dressing. He played six years ago at fucking Stony Brook University. It's awesome. You know, it's like <laughs> could you imagine if this guy gets in? Never, <laughs> never gets in the game. But it's like you know, this is a good story. Headline. It's a great story. It's hard to stick with working out. Huh. Death True. Really hard. I don't know if I've ever seen a, a show that is more encompassing of that. People are looking at this on YouTube. Yeah, even and traveling definitely makes it harder. I, I know that I've been on kind of like a workout kick. I've been getting my heart moving. I'm sweating. I'm playing pickleball. I'm riding the Peloton. I'm doing Peloton workouts. I'm doing all these types of things. And then like you come to a you come to a, a place like this, Hilton Grand Vacations tournament, and you're staying in the hotel. And you know that that gym is filled with like athletes and celebrities because it's a celebrity pro am. And I like don't want to go there. I'm like I'm very, I'm very like my head on my You're intimidated. I'm intimidated. I'm embarrassed. I'm not mm. gonna go. Oh, to that's a, a good field. reason. I, that's the reason I'm not gonna go now. Right. I don't want to be working out next to <laughs> yeah. I'm also Larry very Fitzgerald. intimidated. Are you insane? So Peloton is something to me. That's like it's in my it's in my room. I'm in the confines of my own home. I can wear whatever I want. I can look out as ridiculous as I can. I'm panting. I'm out of breath. I'm screaming. I'm I'm cursing the person out that's supposed to be helping me on the other side of the screen. I love it for that reason. I really do. Uh, that's a great point because that's one of the main blockades for people of going to the did the gym or going to work out is because you're embarrassed. You don't want to go and other people are working out and they've been doing it more and they're into it and you're trying to get into it. Everyone knows what. Uh, what Peloton makes bikes, but they are so much more than just that. If you have not heard, they've got the different classes. I hear people talk about that. Their favorite instructors. I do the yoga classes with Christine. Wow. Yeah. How nice is that? It's great. You throw on, you could be in a hotel. It's actually great for when we're on the road and you know, you can, you can Chromecast it. You put on like a 45 minute yoga situation on your, on your TV Uh-oh. in the hotel and you do yoga in your room. Look Kendall tool rocks my world on the fucking bike. She's a fuck. She's just goes fast and hard. It's crazy. I just can't keep up with her. 
And then this guy, Jermaine Johnson, fucking puts me in a pretzel, man, with the full body strength. <laughs> yeah, he does. Jermaine Johnson just puts my body in a fucking sleeper hold and says, you're, you're mine today, daddy. And this body is not going anywhere unless it's going through me. I swear. I swear I can't do half the things he does. That's good. I like that you're calling out specific people because um, I know people like fall, not fall in love, but they really love the trainers. Yeah, Jermaine Johnson's awesome. Yeah, right. He's just like, you're going to do this now. And you're like, fuck. Resistance bands, heavy weights, medium weights. It's fucking fun, though. I like the way I feel after it. Try Peloton risk-free with a 30-day <clears throat> home trial. <clears throat> a little frog in there. You got it. When you see my <clears throat> output and gone. you compare it to, like, Brock Nelson's. Oh, dude, new so members mine, only. Mine on a 30-minute ride was, like, 175 output. His was 497. <laughs> yeah, you're a piece We're of shit. He's not. four times <laughs> higher. New members only. We're humans. Not available in remote locations. Both see humans. additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. See additional terms, once again, at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. Wow. What do we got for a video tonight? We got Ozarks. Ozarks National. Danny, Danny versus Lurch. Yeah, Danny versus Lurch. Danny is, versus, that, is that the narrative that we're going with? Yeah, you should see the graphic. Danny like versus guys, Lurch in a like match a, where Frankie actually played really well and was not, like, I don't even think we show him. Yeah. Commentated by Riggs. Yeah, you guys are like side yep. characters, Frankie and Trent. That's like one of the better Beautiful. ones I ever played. <laughs> really cool spot. It was. Game. It was heated. It was a heated Lurch there was versus a, There was Dan. a little bit of a uh, match. Of extra motivation, I would oh, say. There you it's go. You, yeah, it's what you, you know, dream for. He's a nice guy, but when you when every piece of content that you put out is you see the same name eighty times in a row, <laughs> you kind of want to beat that guy. Totally. That's fair. So, no, it was that's a, just yeah, human nature. There's a lot. Wouldn't be a human video. if you didn't. Yeah, I mean, the last one did great. You know, I, I think this full crew puts out a really good product, and I think this video is another addition to that. I think the next two are really, really strong. Just everything about it. I think the competition between Danny and Lurch is really strong. I think the next video that's coming out, is that going to come out what? Oh, oh yeah. and water skiing is coming out, which is super embarrassing. Ozark, you want to hang on. And if you get bored of golf, fast forward to at least the last like 15 minutes. Yeah, it's really embarrassing. Very funny stuff. <laughs> I have a shirt. I have my shirt off. It's bad. I saw was, editor Kyle was saying it's like the funniest yeah, yeah. 10 minutes he's ever seen. I mean, it's yeah, it's us, it's us on the lake. We put, are we putting out that on one promo? Lake. It's... What promo? But, I mean, there's you have you have people on this podcast who oh, are the afraid magazine? to show their yeah. legs, yeah. and he has his shirt off. Yeah, Trend. is it a uh, yeah. is it a uh, vulnerable promo that they made? Yeah. It's it's a little vulnerable. It's very funny. Brendan sent us to the uh, sent it to us the other day. All the it's, wording is it's like a magazine cover. <laughs> um, Bush yeah. knows what, obviously what I'm talking about. <laughs> we'll, I mean, we, now we have to put it out, which is my intent of bringing it Bush, up. You're a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> This is 100% why. Look at so, this. Um, <laughs> dude, the, the words on it are amazing. <laughs> There's just The fellas are out of their comfort zone. Dude, We're, they put me on a Playgirl magazine. On. I'm fucking holding my crotch. I got my white-ass body. Also, you fucked me with this. The lighting on this is insane. I know I'm that white, but you fucked me on this, Brandon. You we fucked me harder than that fucking toilet. That toilet. That's right. Golfer Tan Lines, America's drone? New King. That is from the drone. Yeah, we <laughs> surveyed 100 women about their their love of skinny men with outlandish tan lines. The results might surprise you on page 21. <laughs> Big Cedar Lodge, the world's sexiest golf destination. Four-play drama, an in-depth, le- an in-depth look at a golf podcast on the brink. And on the bottom it says cover model, Frankie <laughs> Braley, six handicap, Islanders fan, Doey. <laughs> Doey? I didn't see that part. Who wrote that? Yeah, who did that? Kyle. Oh, That's Kyle. Play girl. He a came up with a copy? Yeah, he did it all. Wow. Yeah, shout out to Kyle, man. Kyle, all great All right, so that's work. coming out. That's tonight. Yep. Thursday. I'm pathetic, and there's really no way of getting around it, and that's just who I am. I'm okay with that. <laughs> On the flip side, Riggs and Lurch, very good water skiers. Really good water skiers. Really yeah, you'll see athletes. some talent out yeah, there. You'll see some actual athleticism. Yeah, grew up with it. Makes it a lot easier. Start doing it when you're fucking young, whatever. Um, I, I miss I miss all that stuff. When you get into like when the life in New York where we live for a long time, it's like water skiing is like the furthest thing. Well, yeah, you can't even imagine the effort it would take. We had to fly to the middle of the country. Dude, I grew up with – there were people who went to my school who were on like water skiing – I don't even know what you call it. Circus is a condescending term. <laughs> but like like the um, – I know what you're talking about. I don't know what the word they is. They would ski is together? Circus? They would They would like go get up on pyramids and they would do oh, – It's like tricks. dressage. It's like a organized, um, synchronized dance. Synchronized ski? Yeah, dance? yeah. But they were – they. I grew up with people who would go to – they're like, oh, I got to go to ski practice. And they would be out on the water just – 
doing crazy shit, and I was never good at it. I couldn't even turn around so that the fucking ski handle could be in between my skis. Like, that was the hardest part. I honestly felt like my body was going to just be like, I'm out. It's over. Good life. Lurch's commentary that he had to, it was quicker for us to move the entire boat around (laughs) you so that the rope would come in at a different angle. (laughs) Than it was for you to just turn your skis the other couldn't, way. So the we could skis just were like off. heavier and bigger than my body weight, so like I couldn't, I couldn't turn. And then, the yeah, event, dude, the, we rolled like the whole time. We were just like, all right, wait, go, wait, all right, go, no, no, wait, wait, my legs are locked. No, my knees. Wait, wait, all right, all right, go. Then my fucking, and then you get like, up and just go right. I think my fucking peepee popped out at one point. Just like all oh, my my it's, my shorts just left. When I was just getting dragged You're by the water. taking a lot of water. Took a lot of water. I was so sick as a dog that night. <laughs> All that lake water just... Couldn't sleep, right? I could not sleep, dude. I legit... My body, my ears, my nose, all that water was just going through my system. That disgusting lake water. Um, I mean, remember your first time water skiing. It couldn't have been that easy. That was my uh, first not, time ever attempting it. So, it. like, you do that on video in front of 400,000 people. It's not going to be that, that fun to watch. Trent didn't even attempt it. I know, where, I know where I am. <laughs> yeah. I should have known what I was. I never should have gotten those things. But that's on tonight. It funny. What is it, 6 o'clock? Is that yeah. what we're doing? 6 o'clock. All 6 right. o'clock. Because right. the dozen's on at 7, right? Is that yeah. what we always do? We try, and, we try and not pile. We've been struggling with trying to like release our stuff around, all the stuff that we do oh, at yeah. Barstool. It's hard to... Contrary to popular belief, Barstool like, has a programming schedule. We have a programming schedule. And like they don't really take us into account. So that that's kind of like gets me. It's like yeah. we put something out every single thursday yeah and then it's like oh barstool put something out at six on thursday i'm like no no no. we've had this spot like our last episode did really well but like we put it out at six and then we were on the dozen at seven and it's like that's just too much to for people to like consume the same guys back to back to back it's crazy so like we have to be better at that i don't know like who needs to whatever but six o'clock tonight and it'll it'll be it'll be a good ozarks national is a hell of a golf course core crenshaw and core crenshaw i mean i think bill core is the best living architect and how different it was from Payne's Valley. It's only a couple miles away, and it was just like a complete, you know, Payne's Valley felt kind of manicured. Ozarks, and they're masters of this. They don't move a lot of dirt, and it just feels like they found this golf course in the hills of the Ozarks. It's spectacular. It's spectacular. Yeah, I didn't play this round. I just walked and commentated, and I was very jealous. Yeah, very it's jealous. a great spot. It's a cool place. Um, we have right. to talk about the dozen real quick. We won. We got our first victory. Oh, yeah. We haven't talked about it last episode. First W in huge, dramatic fashion. Huge performance out of Trent. Thank you. Trent blocked A couple out. big answers from Riggs. I wasn't you much got, of No, you got um. You got a big one. You got the movie one and got the music you got one. one. And the music one. Yeah. It was a yeah. team effort. Yeah. It was a team effort. We yeah, we, had, we, lost, we missed a couple of easy ones, like looking back. It was like... A couple of them that we should have got. Mash-up Celebrity mashup was gotten. hard. We knew who she was, but we didn't know her name. Sigourney Weaver. Was Sigourney it? Weaver, yeah. Um, Do we have one where we almost talked ourselves out of it, even though the other team had given Seattle. us the answer again? Yeah. And then we ended up going with it, being like, we just can't live with them not having given us the second again. We don't know NFL. We it. No. No. We don't know college sports. Nope. Nope. So it's like, if we can just answer everything else. Thus far, we... No offense, we haven't known NHL either. We haven't known no, NHL. No, we haven't. We've missed every. We're not. We've, we don't know. We're right. Or, we don't that's know. Stunning. Yeah, we don't know like, NHL. Dude, it was. They're so, they're hard answers. Yeah. Like who? Cl- dude, when I looked back at my answer, it said active player closest to a thousand points. I think you said Jamie Ben. No, no, no. I said. Um, I threw that name out there. That was no, the I said. Months, um, yeah. I said Joe Pavelski. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I looked back at his stats, and he had 987. Like to actually pull out a guy that is that close to a thousand. The Pretty only good. problem is they said that he had joined a new team that prior year. So yeah. like now, all of a sudden, you're now I got to think of fucking all these guys, and it's fucking. That's the thing is, we just don't know NHL. We're like one layer off. Mm-hmm. We're not like Claude we're... Giroux went to Ottawa. I forgot about that. Yeah, like I mean, Florida. come on, that team went to Florida. No, no, I he went, went back to Ottawa. I back think. To Ottawa? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that Phil Kessel. Went uh, to the maybe Knights. Florida. I don't Phil, know. Phil Kessel. What I totally forgot that he yeah. had gone to the night. So that was did. like, fuck. We got the win. We got, we got the win. win. We got the victory. Trent was on fire at the end, just saying random ass things that were hitting. I mean, how you know Scream is nuts. But yeah, if you haven't seen, I'm it, actually a big Scream fan. If you haven't seen the episode, Scream it's on. It's was. on YouTube. <laughs> the original Scream is one of the best horror movies of all time. Oh, it's yeah. great. And they create a whole universe. And then there's, I think there's five now. Four or five screams. What an opening scene in that first scream! It's one. It's I mean, a the classic. Most horrifying. Like, That's uh, Drew Barrymore. Yep. 
And I love the Scream movies. So we got a little bit lucky, but that's them's is the breaks in trivia. There's that's a new funny. show on HBO. I watched it on the plane. It's called The Last of Us. It was a video game adaptation. It's now on HBO. It's got the third most wa- It was the third most watched premiere in HBO history, I think. I think number one may have been Probably Thrones. Game, game of Thrones. And number two was House of the Dragon. And then three now being The Last of Us. I'm going to say this. I enjoyed it. Roan tweeted this out. So I'm going to steal what he said. If you've seen one zombie movie, you've seen them all. Mm-hmm. True. And it's so fucking true. It's like it's just, the same it's just fucking archetypal. Thing. The first episode's like, how'd this happen? Second episode's like, let's get away from these fucking guys. Third episode's like, how are we gonna fucking stay alive? Like, I, and the only ones come out, so it may be different. But it's just like I know where this is going. Let's yeah. try and not get eaten by these guys. Yep. You know what I mean? It's a fucking zombie movie. What else could someone please come out with like a really unique zombie movie one time? World War Z was kind of oh. good. Oh, what was the zombie like Lincoln one? Oh, that's Gunny Ball's favorite movie. That's of all a time. fucking. That right there is a unique zombie Vampire movie. Slayer? Vampire Lincoln or Abe something Abe Lincoln like that. Vampire Slayer? It's like a, <laughs> Abe Lincoln is a Vampire Slayer. <laughs> that that does it for me. That's like Hot Tub Time Machine. It's a goddamn Hot Tub yeah, Time Machine. That does it for me. <laughs> right, it's like Boss right Baby. Right there in the title. <laughs> the title right there in it's the like title. like Boss Baby, like Nate says. Yeah. He's a boss. He's a boss. And a baby. Vampire Hunter. And a baby. <laughs> one, uh, one golf thing. Okay. So, Live Golf got a TV deal. Oh, that's oh, right. Shit, that's so, right. Yeah, what is, is that? A, is that confirmed? So I've all everything is like nearing, nearing, nearing. I hit them up. They gave me the old no comment, which means, which basically means, because they would deny it if it wasn't. That's a true. confirmation. Yeah. You, you hit know, up Live or CW? I hit up Live. CWTV, so, um, the home of the OC. It was not the OC. Uh, oh, One Tree Hill. One Tree Hill. Hill. Yeah, it's obviously <laughs> not a not a network that's synonymous with sports. It does have a young? I loved One Tree Hill. Young demographic. Tree Hill's good. What's that song? Um, but it'll be interesting mm-hmm. to see what the numbers are, like, because now you can actually compare it to PJ Tour broadcasts and see, you know. Yeah, it's, I mean, my prediction would be low. Oh, I think I so, I but I don't want to be anything other than what mm-hmm. I've been trying to be lately. <laughs> um, maybe like the premiere. Like, I mean, I'm sure a lot of us will watch the first tournament or the yeah. first round. Um, I don't know. I predict a low, but you know, I've been down on live the whole time. It sounds like they're doing the paying as well. Liv is paying okay. for airtime. Liv's going to handle the production cost, which is normally that's not how it works. Um, so yeah, this is, they've bought uh, eyeballs, and we'll see if people watch it now. Wow, things are moving fast. Yeah, it's moving fast. Should we move it fast to these interviews? I mean, we have such a great interview with these guys. John Smoltz is such a legendary Hall of Fame pitcher. The fact that we're about to hear from him right now is exciting. So get ready for that. Also, Alistair Doherty. We have to talk about that. T thirty, very solid debut. First yeah. round. You look. I know he's bummed. I mean, <clears throat> I, I know he's bummed. I know he's disappointed. I can't imagine that a couple months of all that hype and how well he's been playing. He's all pumped. He wanted to go low. He shot that first round thirty and was or uh, three under and was thinking, you know, I'm right there. <sighs> Are you fucking kidding me, man? His first first tournament having legitimate status, a, a bit of a runway in front of him, eight starts. He goes out. He makes the cut easily. He makes a what? Do you, how many? Nineteen. Nineteen birdies and an eagle. I Nineteen were his stats. birdies and an eagle. Clean a few things up. Sure, he's still a little. He's still getting a little frustrated out there. We're in great fucking shape. T thirty is what he's at right now. You'd much rather be T thirty from making nineteen birdies and an eagle and a whole bunch of mistakes than making like six birdies because it's there. The good, exactly. the good stuff is there. And this golf course, from what I gather, is not a golf course for guys who hit in a long way. And Alistair yeah, nine drivers the whole week. Yeah, so nine drivers the whole week. So it's a it's a course that is designed to nullify his strengths, and he still finished in the top, you know, third, four, top fifth probably of the field. So right. it's a very very good sign going he, forward. He had a lot making, of one irons and two irons. And said. there's a lot of guys who are on the same status as him who miss this cut and they're starting and they're already starting to panic. You know yes. what I mean? Getting that first made cut under your belt when you have eight starts is huge. I I agree. I love it. I, I I'm pumped for him. They go straight to Abaco. Uh, which I've been to before. Stunning place. They're still in the Bahamas for one more week, and then they just keep going. It's like eight in a row or something like that. Eight in a row, or six uh, in a row, or yeah. Six, and then they, it's like five or six in a row, and then they have like a month off, and then they go a few more. I think, right, but the reshuffle like happens after eight, so that's that's where he's got to get through. So good stuff, Alistair and Sam, our boys down there, uh, grinding it out. All right, let's throw it to these awesome interviews. Good luck to us uh, at the Hilton Grand Vacation Tournament of Champions this week. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it Hit hard. hard. All right, folks, we're joined by somebody I actually played in a, um, I think last year we played in the Tucson, I guess the member, or the, uh, sorry, the Pro-Am Wednesday before the Tucson event. 
at the Cola Guard maybe a few years ago? Played uh, in the Champions Tour event, I think, three years there. Didn't play okay. last year. So it might have been it might have been two years ago, yeah. but um, obviously uh, baseball legend John Smoltz. You've done a lot of um, um, playing. You've you've gotten big into the golf world lately. One of my big takeaways when I played with you was you were using one of those putters that you leave there. Still have it. You still use that puppy? Bloodline putter. Is that what it's called? Yeah. They tried to make it illegal, but they, they did. did. They did, but they've sustained. So, Suspended it till 2025 to make a decision in 2025. So it's still legal now. It's still legal. They just kick the can down the road. Yeah. So this kick puppy, how'd you get into the bloodline putter? So <clears throat> Arizona, my financial guy had one. I was like, whoa, let me check that out. I made everything. I was one of the worst line putter. Like you could tell me where to put it, but my alignment was horrible. This has saved my putting life. So I don't stand it up very often anymore. I still, you still, I still can, but I've gotten to the point where now I feel I see all my lines again because of trusting. You line it up, you think you're lined up, you go behind it, and you go, "Oh my gosh, that's two cups to the right." And no wonder I'm not making any putts. So, I've gotten to the point that when it's twenty, when fifteen to twenty mile an hour winds, it's a tough. It's tougher to you can't stand it up. You just got to use it as a putter. So okay, that's how it happened. As soon as I putted with it, I went right to the store. Then I got uh, connected with the founder, and and uh, the rest is history. Yeah, it's uh, I I couldn't believe it stands up. Like, yeah, the fact that it stands up on its own that's that's very funny. That if it's windy, it'll just get well. When out. you know when they changed the rule that the caddy can no longer line you up, right? This became a huge advantage. I'm yep. sure that's why they've been trying to figure out it's a conforming club. Why it, that was maybe never the intention, but. Too bad. Does it just feel, buy one. <laughs> does it feel just way different from like the weighting from a oh, normal yeah, it's putter? Oh yeah, it's a very, a very light shaft. All the weights in the head. Yeah. And again, when you think about golf and how hard it is, if you can eliminate one facet of like, if you only have to worry about speed, mm-hmm. putting becomes a little less challenging. Totally. But if you have to worry about speed and alignment, then you got a lot of things going on. So, um, you know, the pros are at a whole different level, but what I'm a very sight-oriented guy. I pitched on the mound 60 feet away, looked at a target, tried to hit it. So that's the same way now I'm, I'm approaching golf when I'm physically good. Which you said is not right now. I'm not physically good right now. It'll probably sound like an excuse, but <laughs> I am. Uh, three years ago, I had surgery scheduled uh, when it was the Diamond Resorts. The next day after the tournament, and I won the tournament, so I postponed it a year. That was the hip surgery? Yep. Then the next year, I had the same surgery set up, and I won the tournament again, so I postponed it again. <laughs> and then last year, I postponed it. There will be no more postponement. Uh, I'm having it as soon as this is over, about 10 days from now. So full hip replacement. Yeah. yeah I'm, not, I'm not excited about it, but I know a lot of good things happen when you get, I just can't keep doing what I'm doing. My, my dad had one, and it changed his life. Yeah, that's what I've heard. But, you know, when you're – you know, I had, what, nine or ten when I was playing surgeries. You know, I don't, you just don't want to have any more, mm-hmm. so – I get it. It'll be better in about eight weeks. I'll be playing again, and I'll probably be playing a lot earlier than that. But don't don't tell my is doctor. It, is a hip uh, um, a common injury amongst pitchers? I mean, twenty plus years on the mound. It's, it's you know, I wouldn't say it's off. common, but it definitely is something that you genetically. I'm probably you know, my dad had it, his brother had it, my dad's dad had it. So I, I probably loose jointed, very loose jointed, and pitching. But I'll tell you what probably did me in was the 10 years of competitive basketball I played after I retired from baseball. In what form? I played two and three leagues a week. What? Why? Because I love basketball. Basketball is my first love. And I was getting after it. It was my competition after baseball was done. I had a group of guys playing with some ex-NBA guys and just loving it. You know, getting staying in good shape. And then when I hit 51 – that was it. I haven't touched it since because if I touch a basketball right, if you throw me one right now, I'm going to find a place to go play, and that's not going to be good. <laughs> you really love it. Yeah. That, I, that's how I grew up in Michigan playing. That's what I thought I was going to play at Michigan State. And then, yep. of course, baseball. Baseball I knew would take me farther once I played uh, my senior year in an All-State All-Star game against seven NBA guys, Glenn Rice being one of them, yeah. Roy Marvel, B.J. Armstrong. And I said, Dad, we're going to uh, – we're gonna to go to baseball. We're baseball guys. <laughs> What's your game like on the court? 
I uh, love to run the point, love to kick it out, break a guy down, kick it to a wide open three. I can shoot, but I'd rather pass. And so, you know, when you're known for baseball and you get in this league and they start, they were three quarter, full quarter p- pressing me, talking trash to me the entire time because I was a baseball player. Well, I quickly silenced them within five minutes <laughs> because they didn't think I could play. Right. So basketball, you know, in Michigan, I played three sports seasonal Mm -hmm. unlike what kids do today yeah they're uh one sport and that's it so when the season changed the weather changed the sport changed and um i loved it it taught me so much about baseball i mean how to be balanced and compete and 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 utilize those skill set baseball basketball i played football as quarterback could wing it like crazy so you must have but but my dad when they made the right choice once i got to high school said no more i can't play because i would have got crushed because I'm the guy that would stay in there. I, I'm going to lead it in interceptions and touchdowns. You're like a Brett Favre figure. Because I'm not throwing it away. Yeah. I could squeeze it in there. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll never know. But uh, be, but my whole career I threw a football in the offseason. And that's what helped keep my shoulder and everything loose. And It's less stress on your elbow. Um, and you're exercising your body without, you know, in your arm without throwing a baseball and putting that tension on the That's on the really grip. interesting. You threw a football every offseason. Yeah. That's yeah. – um, that must have been an interesting choice because if you're the QB, I mean, was the school devastated? Was your high school? They weren't very rattled? good at all. <laughs> so they needed you. They wanted me to play quarterback, right. but they were not very good. You got and, this slinger coming up. Yeah, I, I made the my dad made the right choice because I knew baseball was what what I had a chance to play long term. Um, basketball was my first passion, and football was just something I um, I could say this now, but I played a lot of off season football games. Uh, flag football, dude. Yeah, you're like the general yeah, I, managers I could couldn't it. have been happy. No, I you nobody. You know, I mean, Brian I stayed Rocker healthy. Uh, I shagged like crazy during baseball to stay in shape. There you go. That's how I stayed in shape. You know, I didn't. I didn't do stupid Smart. stuff like play with people I didn't know and pick up basketball. But my routine in the off season was three days a week, legs, upper body, and an hour and a half of basketball three days a week. And with the guys that I train with, and that was was in the best shape of my life. So you clearly have this kick too about playing with the best because you've played quite a few rounds of golf with Tiger Woods. Yes, yeah, and what a blast! Um, you know, TV cannot even come close to justifying what you see live. And I tell people all the time, you know, he has gears that most people don't have. He has imagination that most people try to have. But his will to uh, compete is right there with Michael Jordan. I, I don't know who I'd put. I, I'd put him, you know, neck and neck tie. Yeah, and my, my old job was basically following Tiger around. I worked for Golf Digest for a couple of years, and I, I only really caught one window of Tiger greatness, and it was toward the end of 2019. Yeah. Uh, he won in Japan, and then he went over to the President's Cup, and he was the best player at, yeah. the, at the President's Cup by far. And he was, you know, every shot's turning toward the flag, and every shot's cutting. But you probably played with him in his heyday. I did. So, what you know. What was your, well, what's your best so Tiger particular. story? I loved watching him warm up. Loved going to the range. Um, the shots he would try and the, you know, obviously I would be the same way throwing a bullpen, in particular where my hand is. and Mechanics is everything. Yep. But his will to win and obviously his ability to talk trash was second to none. Uh, but he had the stinger anytime he wanted it. He had the shot. Now, what I remember during that stretch is, he would hit a shot. I was playing with him and Mark O'Meara, and he'd hit a shot, and he would go six feet from the pin, and he goes, called over O'Meara, says, look at this. Look at that. Now, he had nothing to do with where the ball ended up. He goes, that's just talent. If that continues, I'm in trouble. And he was talking about his divot pattern and where the club was coming through, and I'm going, yeah, you're really in trouble. You hit it six feet. But then I realized that next level for them and how they translate you know, under the gun what they're trying to do. And and. I played with him and Annika at the same time when Annika was the first time she ever played with Tiger. Truly the greatest round of golf I've ever been part of. Where was that? That was at Isleworth. She was getting ready to play on the men's tour, play, I think, in uh, Memphis. Mm -hmm. So she was nervous, and rightfully so. You're playing, I mean, two number ones in the world. (laughs) And so I, uh, he told me, he told me the night before, he says, we're playing with with Annika. And I said, all right, you know, don't make a big deal, but but I I think I'm going to beat her straight up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And he goes, all right. So we get out there, and they both tee off, and I'm ready to pull it back. And he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, God. 
I'll bet you Annika beats you straight up right oh, now. Oh, shit. Oh. Call me right on the carpet. Well, fortunately, that round I did. I beat her. Hey. I didn't say a word. She said something. It got out. And next thing you know, it was like baseball was secondary. I beat Annika. Well, the next time we played, she waxed us. Oh, man. And talked trash and won all the skins. So um, she definitely uh, was a treat to play with as well as Tiger. So I was recently reading about you. Uh, you got a call from Tiger a few Sundays before the Masters. Yeah. Well, I was in spring training, called me up. You know, he wanted to always hit against me, which he did. We did a sim- simulation game where, you know, I was trying to get ready. Nobody was there at the stadium, and, and he hit off me, and he did what he did. He wanted to see everything, and he got a little mad when when he realized I was trying to lay it in there for him because, <laughs> you know, it would be like me trying to go to Augusta and qualify. I mean, he's a great athlete. He handles the bat. But this particular day he calls me and he says, we're going to go to Augusta. Um, I'll pick you up at um, – 6 a.m., and I'll have you back by 3 p.m. Can you do it? I'm like, man, I'm in, a, uh, I'm in spring training. Get, can you give me a day? I don't think I can do it, but let me ask my manager. Well, I him and hawed and went into the locker room and finally went into Bobby's office and said, I co- totally get it. I got a – it's on Sunday. I said, I got a, I got an off, really kind of an off-day Sunday. Here's, my, here's the deal. If you say no, I get it. And he said, I'll see you Monday. Whoa. And yeah. I was blown away. So – the part of the story that got a little crazy was I couldn't find his FBO. It was foggy and I couldn't, I, I was like 20 minutes late and I'm on the horn just trying to figure out where his plane is. We get there, we land, couldn't hit any balls, had to go right to the first tee. And, uh, cause you guys are a little late. Yeah. Well, that's cause I was late <laughs> and I pipe it down the middle and he hits it in the bunker on the right. And we're walking down the fairway and he goes, this might be your day. I said, you're darn right. It's going to be my day. And I made six. He made four. He shot 66. <laughs> I shot 76. And I've never seen anyone attack a golf course. They were all Sunday pins. What year was that? Oh, gosh. This would have been early 2000. So, God. Oh. Yeah. And so, I mean, he boringly hit, a, made a, you know, shot 66. It was nothing spectacular, but it was a course that he knew so well. And all the pins were Sunday pins. So... You know, that's a memorable round, not round on our the, There was a clip that came out like a month ago or two weeks ago, and they asked Tiger, like, what's the most fun round of golf that you've played with celebrities? And he said, like, with Smoltz and the baseball guys. Yeah. Yeah, he, he loved baseball. He, he went to a lot of our games. Um, we, had a, we had a three-on-one. It was me, Maddox, and I think Avery, but it might have been Glavin, but I think it was me, Maddox, and Avery, and we were waxing them. I mean, like a scramble or no it was our best ball against his like you know three on ones i mean it's not that's not easy for the great even the great no. well right he turned it on the last five holes and he netted out winning fifty dollars and you would have sworn he had won the masters <laughs> he went crazy rallying back and uh he just like i said loved competing and we we, we had a it, it was like the greatest run of ever for me personally he has such a reverence for athletes he loves athletes he loves picking their brain i remember watching him talking to Dwayne wade and, and yeah. any sport he just wants he just feels a camaraderie with you guys no doubt uh, we play ping pong shot hoops uh you know and 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 the thing is like watching him do his thing is i mean he played me uh, on his knees one hole and I knew, I knew, what? I mean, it wasn't like I didn't know he was going to hit great shots, but he, play, he had to play every shot on his knees. <laughs> so he'd hold and I had to on use one club. I had to use one club and one club only. Okay. So par five, dog leg right, 500 yards, par four, sorry, at Iowa. So I figured five wood, five wood, if I miss the bunkers, I got a chance to make four or five. Well, he striped his driver, striped another one short, chipped up. He made five, I made four. And and I got, I got I said not again, we're not doing that again. And then he got up and down with um, a two iron from the bunker. What if, just for shit. Just, just it's just stuff you can't make up. If I I mean I wouldn't believe you if you were telling me this, but I saw it. And he got up and down with, you know, he could open that two iron up. It's just that kind of stuff. I can't imagine how many different ways he created a shot. How's he hitting it from his knees? That just seems... I know. Just hitting this big draw, I guess. Yeah, he just rotate and pure it. So he's clearly using these opportunities to 
to refine himself, right? In those yeah. moments, he's coming back against you three and all that. Did you do you feel like you got better at baseball while playing against him? Like you know, you I learn? learned I learned so much. We had we would have these inner competitions. I'd have my he he challenged me in my sport, and then he would throw out a challenge in his sport, and it was a fun, friendly kind of like, hey, you get your ERA to X. I got to win three of the next five tournaments. <laughs> And just think about that statement. Yeah. That's just the coolest thing of all time. Have <laughs> that with your wow. friends. Like, and, when me and my friends it's like, oh, let's try to meditate for three I, days. No, it's go. us. We're like, if you break well, ninety and don't jerk off during the month of February, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he did a great job. Well, what happened was my first, second game as a closer, I gave up eight runs and two thirds of an inning. So my ERA for the year is done. That's tough. Yep. So he's like, hey, I think you it'd be a great challenge if you can get your ERA into the threes, and it'd be a great challenge for me if I win three of my next five tournaments. I go, you got it. Well, he won the next three. Oh, my God. So he accomplished his. I had to accomplish mine. I did. But it, it's just the mindset of the way that he competes and trained. And, you know, it's not shocking why he did what he did. How do you end up that close of friends with Tiger? What's the first time you guys interact? You, you know guys what's funny? each other? Is that we met at a grand opening of an all-star cafe in Orlando, and he was just embarking on the tour. Like, it wasn't, you know, you knew of him, and you just knew what he was Before about. Before the Masters. Yeah way before yeah. and so i just said hey we're gonna be down here spring training here's my number if you want to go to any games you want to play any golf you know that's the that's what i wanted to <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah, totally. yeah and totally. sure enough they come took, to a game you know, let's play golf and uh took a took took me up on it and we we if it was 35 or 40 rounds it's probably close i mean it was a ton of golf we played all day when he had time and because we were there in orlando and it was the perfect timing of the year it had a nice window before the players and then before the masters. And, you know, um, it was, you know, he came to Atlanta and played my course when he won the first American express championship and, um, and then East Lake and went to some playoff games and he just loved sports. Like you said, he loved, he loved watching it. Loved, loved being part of it. Wow. Before we lose you, I got to ask you a couple of baseball questions. <laughs> um, I'm obviously Yankees fan. So, late 90s that's like where i got into sports yankees braves was why i became a sports fan yeah. amazing rivalry one of the things i've always wondered in this new age of baseball is how much do you see pitching has changed from like now we're in the in the position where they're taking out pitchers with perfect games just to preserve arms and they have all these pitching limits like do you see is there mechanical differences now like what like what is the main difference between when you pitched in the late 90s early 2000s as opposed to now? information and reward system Okay. They're just not rewarding guys for doing things differently. And if you're not, then you're going to – they want you to throw as hard as you can, go as long as you can, and, and not too long. So it's not the player's fault. They're training for what the reward system is. It is, in my opinion, really, really affected the game, I yeah. think, in a negative way. They're going to try their best with rule changes to try to speed up the game a little bit and get these great athletes – you know, in position to do some things rather than stationary kind of three true outcomes. And it's not about, you'll, you know, you hear a lot of old time players going, well, back in my day, the reward system is totally different. We got paid on performing and basically you had to pitch 250 innings and you were going to get paid. They're getting paid today on possibility potential mm -hmm. so when you run an algorithm and an out al and and analytics the way it's being run that's how the game and that that's what you're chasing so right. you know from that standpoint do i think that's a good long-term plan absolutely not but from an economical side i'm sure they've they've run those numbers to say this is there's factory of arms coming left and right they're not ready they rush them to the big leagues they can throw like the dickens they got stuff that's unbelievable but again, that's a trainable thing that's not law. You can't last. Right. You got to be such a freak. I say it all the time. Like you look at your tachometer in, the, in the, your engine and the car, there's a red line. You don't go past the red line too you much. You don't. Or, yeah. You want that car to last. They're red line pitching. Well, it feels like Tommy John is inevitable these days. And that's the other flaw in the philosophy that, that, that people have adopted. Like, hey, it's inevitable. You're going to get it. You'll be better. Not necessarily. There's a lot of myths about Tommy John. I had mine after 2,300 innings. I knew what I was going to do when I came back. These kids are having it at 16, 18, 21. They have no idea. It's like preemptive. You have no idea. So the, the thing that I tell, and I said it in my Hall of Fame speech, it's not a guarantee. You can likely come back to where you once were. If you're a 12-year-old 
the likelihood of coming back as a 12 year old is decent. Yeah. But then what? Right. And what's the life shelf, uh, the shelf life of that? So I, I just think that the, the athletes are so big, they're so strong, they're so talented. My personal desires to see them play like, tw- like I got to play 21 years. I, I would think, and again, I know financially they don't have to, but man, wouldn't it be great to play as long as you can? And I think that's, uh, the curve is coming the wrong way on the average career length uh, for these guys. But, they, man, they're way more talented and way more gifted. I just want to, I want to see them stay healthy. There's just like an artistry to a complete game, too. Just watching one is way more, I don't know, fulfilling than watching something like you're saying. So watching somebody pitch a complete game is like, that's cool. Yeah, and here's what I'd say about what, what they could do differently is when you watch an all-star game, it flies. You know why? There's no mid-inning pitching changes. Right. right. Everyone pitches an inning. You wouldn't know the difference if you showed up an inning late or two innings late. There's no stoppage. The more stoppage you get in our game, the more innings in, that are interrupted with seven pitching p- changes, yeah. that's where the game slows down, and that's where the strategy has been allowed. They're not doing anything other than the rules allow them to do. Right. So if the rules change, the philosophy will change, and then maybe, just maybe, you'll be asking your guy to do a little bit more than what you've been asking him because you, you need that, you know. 10 to 12 pitchers, starting pitchers per team on average is what they need to get through the year. My gosh. So, I mean, yeah. if they can keep doing that, well, then they're going to keep doing it. So, hopefully, um, you know, the pendulum always swings a little too far. Maybe it'll come back. And, and because if you look at all the teams that win and all the teams that win a World Series, pitching, pitching, and veteran pitching. Yeah. So, yeah. the formula's there. <laughs> Kevin Kevin wants to, to, wants to speak hit. for the for the hitters. <laughs> Got to yeah. score some runs. The pitching segment. We'll get to hitting in a little bit. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh! Yeah, no, it's it, it is crazy. I just feel like I'm still in that. Like I'm at that age where I saw both of them. Like I'm in the analytical world now, but obviously late '90s, early 2000s, you're like this pitcher's pitching well, let him fucking go. Let yeah. him pitch against this guy. And now it's like you're pulling him out because the analytics say that he pitches better against a lefty, even though he's a You know what I mean? I just We've got about eight or nine pitchers that when they leave us, which is soon, starting pitching is going to look really different. Who are those guys? Like Kershaw. Verlander and yep. Kershaw and Scherzer and, you know, those guys who've lived – through both eras mm-hmm. yeah. you know, and have learned how to maximize the information and still know how to go eight and nine innings, right? right? right. I said Verlander's a 10-speed bike. Everyone should look at it that way. He can gear it up when he wants to, but he's not living in 10 speed. Right. And like and, Kershaw's not throwing 99. No. So the guys that are in our younger generation that max out, when they lose velocity or get hurt, their career is based. They don't have any other way to pitch. Yeah. So I hope they're learning to do those things because – that's where the era of baseball is going to change drastically when we lose those kind of guys. Yeah. Because in theory, what analytics wanted to do as a puzzle they put together is say, if we use more pieces to get through, it, it, it takes care of not having the stud, the $25 million pitcher. They've tried to replace that. Right. And by doing that, you cut short the starting pitching that everybody needs. Yeah. And so that's why you see some veteran guys extending well beyond what normally would be their uh, – expiration date because they still know how to pitch charlie right. morton adam wainwright mm-hmm. you know those guys when they're done we won't see that anymore in my opinion until we we change uh philosophically right. and, and ask guys to do a little bit more i think that's right that's interesting yeah we're a couple of us are big hockey guys in the show and they did that in hockey 15 years or so ago when they came back from locker or they changed the rules of the game yeah. because they had a clutch and grab and it was boring and they changed it to a lot more penalties if you even put your stick on somebody and they wanted, you know, they wanted the excitement of the game to stay fast and speed up. Yeah. And it worked. It's a lot more Every sport's done it. Baseball's been slow to do it. They finally yeah. pulled the trigger this year. You're going to see some absolute changes to the game that are going to affect it positively. The shift going away is going to be fantastic. Yep. And, you know, opportunities that um, are going to create an opportunity to probably probably steal more bases than we're doing. Yep. A lot of things that'll that'll happen that'll be great. And um, you know, I think if we had the rules that are coming into play, Kevin Millar would have more than eight stolen bases. In his career. <laughs> I is that, mean, is that the, the correct would, number? Would, is it eight? He would he would definitely. <laughs> and whatever you guys do, I mean, he's a good friend of mine. Don't ask him about how he fared against me because that okay. that will set the show in a whole different. Well, how, over how did he two. fare against you? Mm-hmm. Bully because he decided instead of fastball slider, all of a sudden he wants to develop the split finger. Like who does that? <laughs> like <laughs> Smulsey, and uh, you know, like 150 wins or a plus and 150 saves. Like bully, and he could hit. He's the only athlete on the team. 
<laughs> what was your strategy trying to get him out? Uh, a you- lot of sliders. He wanted to pull the ball. He didn't <laughs> like going the other way. So um, right-handed hitters, I, I had, there was only one or two I feared. Albert Pujols was one of them. Um, and uh, the uh, Cabrera, Miguel Miggy. Cabrera. Yep. Uh, they stayed on the ball. I like guys who didn't stay on the ball. I like guys who wanted to lift, clean, and separate, hit it out of the park. I had really good success against them. But um, those guys, uh, they were elite and obviously are Hall of Famers. That late 90s Yankees team, what was it like trying to go through that lineup? Because for me, I love the homegrown nature of them. I thought they all – it was the perfect baseball team in my life. You know what they had that doesn't really maybe exist today is they had a team approach to beat us, and they executed it perfectly. Right. And that team approach, they didn't have a bunch of 40 home run hitters. They had a bunch of 20 – 25, they were disciplined, only had two free swingers in that lineup. But they said from the start of 1996, when we were up two games to nine, and then I blacked out, I don't remember what happened after that. (laughs) They said they were going to make us get out of the game and get to our bullpen, and that that would, they said they they took pitch after pitch. They they basically waited us out, and it worked, and they, they won the next four games. They were very disciplined, and I've never seen a whole approach like that collectively guys buy in right how does that happen i mean you guys had similar though i mean you guys were such a good team for that stretch it's like how does is it someone is it like a Derek jeter in the locker room like who's like how is how does the whole team collectively all buy into the same thing they bought in bob watson i believe was the hitting coach then and they bought in you know about what what you see all the things that we knew then the same guys know now. It's just more advanced. We had the same information, just not as technical. You knew where like they liked to hit. You knew it. everything that a hitter wanted, right. and we just didn't have the printouts and the you know the, the sexy iPads stuff. That, and yeah. That, yeah. So at that that part of the season when we had won three in a row against St. Louis, we were down three games to one. We scored thirty some runs. Mm-hmm. Then we beat the Yankees twenty three to two in the first two games. But I remember saying it was eleven to nothing on my game one against Pettit. And I kept coming in. I go, they're not swinging. Something's up. Like, you got to be swinging an 11 nothing game. But they stuck with that plan the whole time. And finally afterwards, because I knew Bob Watson, I said, Bob, you got to tell me, what what did you guys do? Like, why did you didn't swing? And he told me, he said, we collectively said, we got to get you guys out of the game wow. and we'll beat the pen. And Give me the chills. They did. <laughs> That's incredible. Wow. Fucking awesome. That's incredible. Well, what an interview! We uh, uh, good luck with the surgery. Good yeah, luck you. this week. Um, eight weeks. That's not. That's, that's not bad. It'll be about. You'll be back in five. It'll be, yeah, not bad. six five. I mean, Millar had ha- hair transplant, and it, it did. It, it was like six <laughs> weeks. He's playing golf. You six know. Weeks. I got to say this too, and thanks for having me on. But he carried me yesterday as a partner. Okay. The man's on fire right now. I hope he stays that way because he's climbing a corporate ladder of, of where he wants to finish in these events. And it's big for him. Like, this is like, he's passionate, loves the game, um, loves people, loves life. But, but let's face it, he's got to get in the top 15 sooner or later. <laughs> and, and maybe this is the year. All right. Awesome. John, we appreciate Thanks, it. Thank you so much. All right. So I, I'm going to imagine people have already hold, heard the Smoltz interview. At this yeah, we're going to do a base. It's a baseball episode. This is a baseball podcast episode that we're doing. Um, <laughs> We had Kevin Millar on. You were just getting chirped pretty hard over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is your vantage point of what he was saying about, you know, your guys' interactions out there, your guys' duels? Yeah, what happens is, is Smoltz's played probably 42,000 more rounds than everybody because let, let, let's let's be honest, guys. You guys were talking about pitchers and stuff. Think about what they do. They <laughs> play once every fifth day. Think about it. 30 <laughs> times a year if they're, quote, unquote, healthy. <laughs> awesome. Position players, 162 every single night, and pitchers want you to go out because they're partying for four nights. They got golf clubs on the road, right? They're going to a city they don't even play. Like, hey, bro, where are we going to go golf? So then they want you to go out and party with them, but then the night that they start, they're in bed by 11.23. They got their, you know, they got their lotion on their hands, and, I mean, it is a racket, you know, as a starting pitcher in the big leagues. And, and, I, and I'm telling you right now, kids, if you're listening, pitch. Just throw. Throw as hard as you can, and then you're in. And, you know, you can go three innings now. Right, that's right. High That's so true. And you said, I mean, a pitcher can't hit except for that the one that we just had on the show. Yeah, <laughs> he's a pretty good hitter. Smoltz's good at everything. He's the most competitive dude I've ever been around. That's probably why Tiger likes him so much, dude. He's he's he he'll compete ping pong, basketball. I mean, the guy. And we got close, you know, since the network and stuff. And 
facing him as a you know as with the Marlins. You got Glavin, Maddox, and Smoltz. That was a fun you know series. We, <laughs> we lost a hundred games a year, and we had them a million times. And the Mets were good without a lot of them. But it was series. like facing them and now seeing them. It's just I wish they were just this this nice of guys. He was saying he was playing flight football in the off season. Like he couldn't you couldn't keep him off a basketball court. You couldn't keep him off a football field. He no, is a, he's crazy. He stayed with me. One of the World Series, you know, we live outside of Houston, a couple hour drive in Austin, and I mean, he just a guy gets out of the car, you know, he has the basketball, and we get a little, you know, the hoop in the driveway. He just, whoo, whoo. I mean, look like Steph Curry. I'm like, bro, is there anything you can't do? Him, his hair's not good. That hair sucks. So <laughs> his hip is that, bad too, right? He's got the convertible. He's got well the hip <laughs> now, but that's age. But the hair, you lost that, you know, fifth grade. But the guy is an unbelievable athlete. So you want him on your side? Yeah. Wow. That makes sense. I, I'm always curious of that dynamic even on a team between the pitchers and and pretty much everybody else because that every fifth day that's so unlike almost any other sport it really is because like he should be good at golf he can play that, four that, days that's a week. why they're all great like Derek Lowe won it last year Mark Mulder I mean Marty Fish you know tennis but you look at all the pitchers they can play golf and and they play well and you know honestly God I never played golf when I played I would I, I really wish I would have it wasn't that cool now golf's really cool yeah but Think about it. we got to be at the field at you know you got a four o'clock bus three o'clock bus whatever it is you're getting up at six thirty as a position player golfing eighteen right mm-hmm. driving back to and then you're, you're just a quick shower and then you got a game so that's why there's not a whole lot of position players that play right. consistently you know on the road that was a big word by the way consistently uh, you guys, got through it I got through it we battled did you guys get that <laughs> <laughs> but that, you know they are they, they can play golf most of the pitchers so when did you get the golf bug when I got released in two thousand ten with the Cubbies. You get home and you know, you're 38 years old. You're old in sports, but like, what do you do? Like, what what do you grind? It's a lot of years to fill. Think about it. every every our whole life was you know one o'clock bus, you know uh, four o'clock stretch, BP at six, games at seven. So you're wired that your whole life for 20 years. So there's a golf course near you know, and back when you were a member of a golf course, like you had to be rich, right? I mean, mm-hmm. th- that was like the rich kids, uh, you know. So I never was around. But I joined it, met a few guys, and, you know, you start out as a big 20 handicap drilling people and losing balls, and then, you know, it's been fun. 162 game season, was that just the biggest grind ever, or is it okay when you're in the midst of it? I loved, like, every minute. Like, you know, yeah. and I love baseball. You know, Dustin Pedroia, we were with John Lester, his retirement party a couple weeks ago in Atlanta, but just talking, but, like, dudes, not everybody loves baseball. There's a lot of guys that are great at baseball that they just they want to get away from it, right? Uh, no more Garcia Parra. You know, he's great at baseball. Wanted to watch soccer on, on, on the TVs where we're trying to change it to the other games. But he was just like, that was the way for him to get out. Like, once they play, they're out. I was a lifer. So I loved the grind of, like, 162. I hated days off. You know, uh, you had spring training for 30. So you're getting ready for, you know, that six weeks prior. And it's just, but that's the grind. So that's all you know. Yeah. It sounds like a lot if you're not a baseball fan, but once you're when you're a ball player, like I mean, you're in there every night, and right. and, it, and it's a dog fight. You know, you're rolling. You might have Clemens, Mussina, you know, Andy Pettit. In the next series, you know, you're playing Rain Johnson, Kurt Schilling with Arizona. So you can get you can fail a lot right. you know, as a hitter, and I think that's the one thing that makes you tougher as a position player is you fail. Like you you know you're you're making a right hand turn 350 times a year, <laughs> opposed to making a left you know, 150 out of 500 bats. So it's it's one of those things, like, it's a grind, and you just never – you can't get too down and you can't get too high. Where does he rank on, on all the pitchers you ever faced? Dude, he was as nasty as there was, honestly, God. Like, the nastiest guy people ask is Randy Johnson. Just I mean, he's thrown 100, 100 yeah. 610, you know, not Coming easy on the eyes. Angle. Yeah, and, and, and nasty that slider. So you, as, a, as a right-handed hitter, you're, you're looking heater. It's 100, and then all of a sudden here comes this 92-mile slider that just drills you in your right ankle. So he was he was when he was on he was tough because of the velocity. Smoltz, powerful man, fastball slider. You know I was joking with him, and then he developed a split finger. But <laughs> but he's just he, he he's power. You know Glavin and Maddox, they're just going to frustrate you all game. You just never find the barrel. But like those guys, they're going to embarrass you. Was that more frustrating when a, a guy is it more frustrating to get these like little weak ground balls and to swing over something? Yes, yes, because Maddox, you know, he threw seventy to eighty eight. And the ball moved everywhere. It's like playing wolf ball in the backyard with your buddy. Yeah. You know, once you crush me, you're like, yeah, but it's always moving. <laughs> yeah. And it's just they never find barrel. How do you – because you talk about failing a lot. You do as a hitter. That's just the name of the game. How do you, over 162 games, keep yourself straight? Because you're striking out. You're, you know, hitting ground balls. Like, how do you keep yourself together? Yeah, I mean, you line out. You know, it's like hitting a good shot golf or a putt. It doesn't, you know, whatever. But you just – 
it's one of those things. It's a constant craft. So every day you take batting practice. You go to the cages. You go, you know, you're doing flip or some guys have T, Manny Ramirez. You know, I used to follow him around because this is the greatest right-hand hitter I've ever seen. When I played with him, you know, 03, 04, 05, you got Pujols and Cabrera. But I was with Manny, so watching him, and it's it's an art. Like every day he hit. He'd get there early, he'd go, Poppy, let's go. And he went to cages every day. And he's hitting 340 with 35 and a, and 100. So he comes off so aloof. Yep. You know, like, oh, we're Manny, me, Manny, and what's he doing? Defensively right. and goofy when he runs sometimes. But when he's in that batter's box, like, there is so much time that's put in at 12 o'clock during the day. The game's at 7. He's watching video. Like, it's not a secret why these guys are the best, like Jordan and, you know, Kobe Bryant. You hear about Tiger. I mean, he's going to range five hours after a round to work on that craft. So hitting's that. Some guys don't do that. And then, you know, it pays off. You, you just you don't make the adjustments. The guys that work. They stay in the game. Has baseball evolved like the other sports have where like I feel like if you take a guy from the ni- the 90s in the NHL, he may not translate to 2022. But if you take Manny Ramirez and throw him on the Dodgers tomorrow, you know, prime Manny Ramirez, he's still hitting 340, 30 yeah. home runs. I mean, is, has the game changed that much to you, do you think? Not for right-handed hitters. I think right-handed hitters, you can't shift like the left-handed hitters do. Interesting. Brian McCann's here at this event. And, you know, it basically put him into retirement Yeah. because it does get frustrating. I mean, I, I did, you know, do a few of the Red Sox games. And first time I really saw it was in the in the booth. I'm doing a game, and, I, and Devers comes up, and there's four outfielders. Yeah, right. Like, and, and you know, the, the fan, well, just bond, just bond four times. Like, if we're going to watch Barry Bonds and – you're going to watch him drag bunt three or four times. Like, that's not what we really it want. Sucks. It's something that it looks normal because there's nobody on the left side. Right. But at the end of the day, like, we're waiting for Big Poppy or Barry or somebody to hit it in the right. lane. And that's where it's, it's just now with the shift changing, it might get back to, like, what we're talking about. Right. Now, Freddie Freeman, he hits 330 with a shift on, So, but he's a bona fide hitter. A lot yeah. of guys don't hit. They, they, they're, they're swinging for the downs. They're paying to hit 220 with 30. And so this launch angle and all the stuff you guys are hearing, you know, it's an uppercut, right? We had uppercuts, now it's launch angles. Like so, there's this. But at the end of the day, you got it's the best cat and mouse game in all sports: pitcher versus hitter. Like yeah. the adjustments and who's going to grab their crotch and let's roll. I mean, and that's the mindset. But we're like matched up now, and then you can't see the hitter more than twice and two times around yeah. the lineup. So there's all this stuff going on that sometimes deteriorates the the battle. And they're bringing the shift. They're, they're, are they stopping, eliminating it? Yeah. Or are they trying to? So this will be the first year's back where you can shift, but you can't go on the other side of second base. So the second two baseman, two. can the shortstop or the third baseman can stand what? Like just to the shortstop side of That's second right. base? That's right. So, so still you know, be shift, there's been but... shifts, but we're the only sport. Like you can't line up 10 linemen on a, on a right. line or you can't stand right. the key for more than three seconds in the yeah, NBA. True. So we're the only sport. Like there's got to be just a little bit of rule. Wait, so is it two guys on each side of the bag? Yeah. So, this, a good so the shortstop I was can't even cross. Trying to think of like, why are they allow? Why is there? Why are they allowed to basically tell you where to play defense? But that's a great point about basketball, where you can't stand the paint. Can't just stand, seconds. right? That's a fucking great point. It really is. That's a huge argument in, on behalf of changing the rule. Because I think I was going to say at some point, so like you know they something. shouldn't be able to tell them. Well, it's just like, oh wow, right. like you guys have figured out the defense so well that we have to change the rule. But like yeah. every fucking sport's figured. We're the only yeah. sport, right? <laughs> think about <laughs> right. It, right? It's crazy. Well, that just blew my mind. You, you're you, always coming up with these great things. See, like, guys, I didn't realize that. You know? I was an L.A. City College graduate at my uh, associate's degree, and now we just figured it out. I'm pretty well, you got about that, that, and then, where's of course. Where's L.A. City College, downtown? or Yeah, Vermont Melrose, right by SC. Got it. Beautiful place, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, the it, SC it, campus yep. is nice. The SC campus. The, the, the area campus, around it is yeah, not so we great. We were a mile down the road, and I'm telling you, first, first week, my car broke into twice. I'm like, man, this is awesome, but you did it to play. Yeah. Could play anywhere else. They so figured there. out the rule, and of course, fucking don't let us win today. Ruined my life. I mean, as a Yankees <laughs> no, fan. No, remember, remember, we 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 bonded. We we're, did we're bond boys. for a little bit, but you know, for anyone that doesn't remember when you talk about it, it's just it actually like hurts my soul going back to that time, watching that. I watch you do that interview before the game. It's just insane. Just. Just remind us just a little bit, like, what was going on in your brain, like, why you're saying that. I mean, was it, like, a joke at the time as you're saying it? Did you actually have the confidence? No, so won- what really happened was Dan Shaughnessy called us frauds and did in the Boston Globe. He's right up there for Boston, and, and instead of a pack of frauds, we're down 03, and I was taking a, a deuce that next morning reading the paper back when we read the paper. And I just see the pack of frauds. I'm like, dude, frauds? Like, the Yankees might be better than us. 
but to be called a fraud because we're down 3-0 in That's a seven-game series, it's, it, so that was the one word that – so I got to the field that day, about 12 o'clock. Media's allowed to come in probably at, you know, two or three. And, and, and you know how it is. You're down three games. We just got our asses whipped on game three. And so guys just sitting there, and you're just kind of a lot. And I came in just talking smack. And I was like, all right, frauds, bro. So here comes the media. <laughs> Here comes Sean C and there's 50 guys. And, and so I just started, you know, talking smack to Dan, like, your hair sucks. <laughs> your hair Sean sucks. hair does suck. His well, hair and sucks. so and he's, you kind of see it's uncomfortable for a second. And all of a sudden you got dudes start locking it. What the hell is Mar saying? And all of a sudden Big Pop, yeah, bro, whatever he said, you know. And then all of a sudden you start this little fire of yep. that word yep. fraud is now we're not down 03 right now. We're, we're kind of like, let's figure this out, frauds. So then I'm like, is Trot Nixon a fraud? Is Billy Miller a fraud? Is Pedro Martinez a fraud? I go, they might be better than us. And so I'm getting my shoes on, getting ready to go out there, and that's when the boomstick caught that. And we're in the dugout. He's like, you know, why are you so hard on me? And I said, Danny, there's a difference. Yankees, do, do their lineup. It's A-Rod. It's Jeter. It's whoever. It's Jambi. It's Sheffield. It's Matsui. It's, it's the whole scene. Billy Miller, Orlando Cabrera, Mark Bellhorn, Kevin Millar, got it. They're better. Fraud's a big word. That crossed that's the it. line. That, well, that, that's a big word. You get the power of the pen, but don't let us win tonight. I'm going to tell you that right now. Don't <laughs> let us win. We, got, we didn't know we had D'Lo going. It wasn't a great matchup, matchup-wise. But then we got Pedro game five, Schilling game six, and anything happened game seven. So that's how that started was that right. on the toilet seat with the word fraud. And then there we have it. And – Listen. It's amazing how much media can change the landscape of a series like that. It's crazy, that. right? Because it gives you, they call it bulletin board material, but like it gives you guys a, a reason to like really rally. What'd you say? Bulletin board? Yeah, I couldn't get through Baltimore it. Baltimore Oriole board. <laughs> yeah, Baltimore <laughs> Oriole board. Bulletin bulletin board material. See? Yeah. But it is, it's it's amazing in sports how, especially team sports, how you, you, you almost take that word and even if like he didn't deserve it, which he does, he's, he's a loser, but... He doesn't necessarily serve or whatever. You take it and you find it. You start chirping your own guys. And like in the Jordan doc, when he yeah. literally makes up what people say about him so that he'll hate these people. So when he goes onto the court, he's got this fire and he's going to go out and he's going to bury you. And it's like when you guys found that, like you said, it's like maybe they, maybe they are better, but like we're not frauds. <laughs> yeah, we're we're not gonna, frauds. We're going to bring the It's heat. a big word. And it worked like that clearly yeah. fucking worked. It just gets you off that mindset of what the series is at because to beat the Yankees four straight I mean Michael Waltrip won two <laughs> Daytona 500s who, who I mean anybody win one tell me, about but, your, uh, your, your, tell me about where you were standing there two outs we were down by one tell Mariano me. Rivera one of the greatest number 42 and by God I walked Mike he threw up my neck. And Joe Torrey this day says, I, 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 the only thing I regret is walking to the mound saying, go after Millar. And God bless America, Mike. We're standing together because if I'd have popped out, I'd have probably been reincarnated as you know what. Yeah, yeah. You know, a fraud. One yeah. five. Now that survived. So we have a brew company, Mike Waltrip and I, and I have number 15. He was the real one five. He's older. Uh so yeah that was so you know yankee stadium you guys are really friendly with the red sox <laughs> yeah so i look over there <laughs> this. This and there's a, a sign to my left and at first base and we're playing defense and it says malar equals buckner oh and i was like oh. oh god oh you know he had to move to montana i wasn't ready for that move yet <laughs> <laughs> so he had to run yeah i'm sitting here going oh my god so i'm like please don't hit me oh my god please don't hit me and i started counting like where are the righties i'm like okay posada lefty jambi lefty bernie lefty and it, Matt Suey, and then Jeter goes to right. God, pull the ball. And I'm like, you start panicking. Like, yeah. a physical error cost you your life. I've been in Montana. Mike, Mike and I would probably never have been friends. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh, that's they so don't funny. race much up in Montana. Well, did a, did a ball come to you while you were freaking out or no? Maybe one, I think. I, I smothered it because I had great hands. I got snubbed a few gold gloves, as you guys probably remember. Yeah. Um, oh, now we're going to talk about him, huh? <laughs> no, I was being yeah. facetious. I, like, I, I was being him. facetious. I liked uh, you I better bricks. when you were scared. I uh, was. That's what I'm saying. Was break hands, you get scared <laughs> over there. What What was that month after that like for you guys in the city of Boston? I can't imagine a, a group of guys being more revered, beating the Yankees down three. I mean, that must have been heaven. <laughs> they it, it changed the culture. As a player, you don't realize the years that people had suffered. 
So that was the cool thing, like to realize the grandparents yeah. that had passed or Denver saw the Red Sox, they called us <clears throat> a rivalry. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I said, wait a minute. 27 rings to zero. That's not a rivalry. That is a butt whipping. Yeah. So there wasn't a rivalry. The cities and the towns and, you know, generations. But as players, it was like we won. And that's what you're trying to do. And then you realize how special it was in time to do it for the Red Sox. Because now with just the, you know, the emotions that people come up to you, it's pretty cool. You don't realize that while you're in the moment. You're just a player, right? right? You're just playing against the Yankees. And then, but then if you're not from Boston or not from New York, you don't realize the passion that the fans and the towns have. And then you have three and a half million people for the parade in a small, Massachusetts is very small, but it feels like you can be in Seattle. Somebody's from Boston. Somebody's right. a Red Sox fan. Yeah. You know, it's like the Yankees and the Cubs and the Red Sox. There's just fans and they travel well, but it was the coolest thing. It's life changing because you're a normal guy and then now you're Aerosmith. Yeah. Right. yeah. And we were just normal dudes. We you weren't like. for a drink. Yeah, you're Jack Daniels. I mean, you know, you do shots of Jack now. So you, every bar you walk in, you're doing Jack now for the rest of your life because right. somebody's going to remember. What feels better, a Boston fan God being like. A, bo- <laughs> a Boston fan being like, oh, my gosh, thank you for doing this. Or a Yankee fan like Frankie being like, you ripped Crushed our fucking souls. hearts out. Well, Frankie's got to understand this. How how much nicer can I be to Frankie? We gave him a three-game lead. Yeah. And Good point. a lead in the ninth inning. <clears throat> so they're up three, and they're up in the ninth with the greatest closer in history. You would think Frank would just say, you know what, Kev? God bless it, man. You guys deserve that. And he's still mad at me. Did and you I guys don't see anything change with Mariano? Like, what what? Sh- because to us, it's like, hold, hold on. Everyone in the house is like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Are you guys seeing something on the bench being like, that's not the usual ma- That's not the usual mo. No, we face him a lot, right? Because yeah. you're in the same division. So my, me personally, I enjoyed facing mo. It's not that you made a living off mo, but he was a one-pitch hard boom. And I could hit the fastball, but his command is impeccable. So when he puts that cutter and Posada sits there, that glove doesn't move. Like yeah. that's He's got 95, 96, 97. You know, he elevates it, but... It's a filthy pitch because it comes at you as a righty. So anything that throws at you, you're kind of like flinch, right? And yeah. that's what his hitters, you know, it's 95 in your ribs, or hopefully it's going to cut. So I, I just kind of, you're hoping to cut it, but I, I love facing him. And, you know, I had a home run against him. Maybe that's, he knows he's homered. Yeah. Maybe he's like, want to be more careful than he was. And obviously he threw five balls. I mean, you know, sorry, four balls. But one hittable pitch was the 1-0 count. I fouled off. <laughs> I think he gave bloody towels, like behind me. <laughs> the ball was coming out my face. I think I fouled it off over the left field dugout. And some bloody towel. You see the towel up. I'm like, oh, God. That was before the Nets. It's before the Nets. Exactly right. Yeah. It's funny when you talk about, like, um, yeah, the, the towns. Because I always think about when you see a stat, you watch a game, and you're like, oh, this team hasn't won against this team in 30 years at home or something ridiculous. Right. Like that. And you think, like, well, those players weren't around in 1980. They don't give a shit about what – the record was or what like the the lifetime record between the Yankees and the Red Sox is that they've that guy may have just gotten signed four months ago he doesn't give a fuck but then like when you're saying when you look at the bigger picture it all like you're when you're signing on to that team and you're putting on that jersey you're taking it all in you're, you're taking exactly everything right. that comes with it you're taking the town you're taking everything that happened 100 years ago 80 years ago it may not feel like it but it is a part of the story it's so, your it's such a great point yeah in the media you know you always hear uh the Philly and Boston and New York but it's the passion also. Yeah. Like when we played the Royals, we were sold out. When we played the Rays in Tampa, we were sold out. Yep. You don't realize that till you go play for the Orioles <laughs> my next three years after that run in, in Boston. It's not like that. Yeah, like we go with there's 17,000 people in Tampa now, and everybody's talking about how, what a bad place it is to play. And I'm like, no, we were sold out. It was awesome. But you don't realize it But until you leave those organizations, yeah. the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Cubs. They just travel well. You know, people that can't get tickets – would sell out in Baltimore. They drive up the road and go to that mm-hmm. game. So it is an amazing thing because you take on all of it, and that's what you want as a player. And the ones that don't want it, then keep them, you know, on the West Coast or somewhere that's more mellow. But you know, makeup's a big a big deal, and GMs don't think about that enough. Give me some makeup from a player besides being maybe the best player that doesn't like that. Yeah. Did that factor into your decisions about like where to sign based on the city and based on the team and the history, or was it just get as much as I can? No, my, my whole life I want to play for the Dodgers, right? Growing up in LA, I was 20 and then I left LA. I've been in Texas for 30 years, but Dodgers were my team. Vin Scully, my dad every day. And at my whole career, I was on the East Coast. But when it's all said and done, my makeup is an East Coast player. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I loved every everything that comes with it the pressure, the negative. 
and then the positive, right? And when you do well, your love for life, and that's just the way it is. So winning a championship, obviously, in Boston is huge. And being the first one, I mean, there's no greater championship World Series ring right now, in my opinion. I mean, the Cubs did it, but I just feel like there was something cool about Boston because of the Yankee series. Yeah. It's on the Mount Rushmore of all-time championships. No, yours is number one. Yeah, yeah I just did the Yankee one? Sox yeah. series was crazy. And yes. then the year before was unbelievable. You know, when that yeah, game, Aaron Boone's home run, yeah. like, we're extra innings and Mario yeah. is four innings in. He could have pitched 17 innings we weren't going to score a run. Like, it's... Uh-huh. But that was an unbelievable game. It was the 2003-2004 back-to-back. Yeah. It was the highest Boone. of highs. Oh, three was Aaron Boone, yeah? Yeah. 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 I mean, just... that rivalry was so hot that oh. on fire. We fought. You know, there was always something on Zimmer. And then the Trot Nixon, didn't he punch or Veritech punched A-Rod? Or... A-Rod, that, that thing. Sheffield fought, you know, f- some fans. Pedro right threw Fenway. the old guy down. But yeah, yeah that, I mean, that was the, it was, <laughs> was crazy. Insane. That, that was insane. insane. <laughs> Crazy. Were you guys like, what, what did we, when you guys saw that clip, were you like, Pedro, what, what did you just do? P- Pedro was just walking out of the dugout. <laughs> and Pedro was just walking out of the dugout. And yeah. all of a sudden, Zimmer comes running across the field. They hated Pedro because he hit Jeter a few times. And, yeah. you know, Pedro would pitch. And all of a sudden, you just see him step aside. And he kind of... The head kind of went down, and <laughs> yes. it was crazy because you don't know what's going on until the video. I'm like, oh, my God, and everybody loves Zimmer. I mean, yeah, he's the right. best. Yeah. Grabbed his head. Oh. <laughs> it was an insane oh, video. I want to kill him. So how do you feel about this week here, playing your game? Your game feeling good? Dude, I love it, man. I Honestly, God, I, I will my way around. My golf swing's terrible. I love just the competition of yeah. it, you know, getting the ball in the hole. Putting's always the thing. I could drive the ball pretty decent and – but it's just it's it, the nerves, you know. It's our Augusta playing oh, yeah. the ball in the hole, right? Yeah. You like with your buddies, like that's good, that's good. And you get over a sixteen inch putt here, and you're like, oh god, oh shit, oh my god, it's downhill and left right? right. Like it's but so it's 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 amazing playing boys. with the LPGA girls, though. like Nelly Corda, like watching them swing. And you know, dudes, when we swing, we're like trying to smash it. Chicks yeah, take the long pathetic. ball. It's we don't even know. And their swings are just like butter, and the ball goes just as far as ours. Yep. And we, I just swing as hard as I can. You know, it, it's it, they're 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 awesome. I'm fun pumped. Week. It's so a fun week. We're doing a we're doing a relay this week. What do you got? I'm uh so I play the Thursday round. We keep one score for the whole time. I play the Thursday round. Dan plays Friday round. Trent plays Saturday round. Frankie plays the Sunday round. Dude, so we're it's the first time hey. we've ever done anything like this. First Passing time we've played in something like this. Speed, bros. Let me just tell you on the putting. Yeah, don't worry about it. making it. Yeah. Just get this son of a gun. I putted for like 30 feet. minutes like, and they're rapid. Just speed. Putted yet. Just, just kind of know your I, speed. No downgrade, no in the grain. My guy fucking Scott Fawcett, uh, he tweeted out the other day, stop trying to make putts. Did you see that tweet? Mm-hmm. Like, no. Dude, uh, his right. whole it's, thing it's, is that putting so is all speed. Stop trying to make putts, he said. And everyone's like, what the fuck do you mean? And like, what he's actually saying makes sense, just like he always does, like with the decade golf stuff, where he's like, if you try and hit the putt, percentages are that's not going to go in or exactly where you want it so just try and get the speed and the location of where you want to start this ball if you nail that everything else is essentially just luck like you know what i mean like 30 percent of perfect putts don't go in because of imperfections in the exactly. green exactly so he's 100%. like just find your line find your speed and just hit it there. just be aware of down grain and mm-hmm. in the grain down grain stop looking fast. at the hole stop trying yeah, to well, make because we all do hole. you know we get a 20 foot putt. that's not a birdie putt that's you're trying to butt and get the yeah, hell out of here if right. you watch on the pga tour putting green they're all doing speed drills because that, it's it's not all that hard to start a putt online for most people it's like if you put them on a dead flat thing with yeah. one of those putting mats you're going to make the putts it's where this you just matching up speed and line and nerves. Yeah. Right? You get a little nervous and you're, you're just, uh, I'm nervous. Totally. Very I'm nervous, nervous right now. Super nervous. I'm nervous when <laughs> you said nervous. the word putting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think, yes. Yeah, I think the first putt I might hit this whole trip is going to be on the first green tomorrow. <laughs> yep. Yeah, seriously. Just, just, just wild out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. You guys are awesome, yeah. though, man. Roll the rock. Uh, good luck. What's your, what's your best finish here? I think I snuck into the teens once, but. Most of the time, been down there at the end of the twenties and some thirties, but I, I, I just want to get in the teens. Do you yeah. like a six handicap or a seven? Yeah, handicap? five. You know, but I mean, I'm a, I'm going to shoot. My good rounds going to be seventy four five, and then my shitty rounds eighty three. Yeah, that's so pretty I'm consistent. Like, You're pretty tight. Golf, yeah, I just want to. If you can just play golf. four good rounds in the seventies, good golf for me. <sighs> yeah, what what how how good are like top ten in this? They shot for- I me. Mean, Marty fished in Tahoe. He had nine birdies in the first day. He shot sixty five. I'm like, I don't have that. In he my tried bag. to be. A, he was almost a pro. Yeah. So we like, you're no playing chance. against dudes that go. We have know, no Derek Lowe, like they golf. Right. I mean, we're up there. Like you said, you get a few pars in a row, you're feeling good about yourself. Totally. A bogey and another par. Like I'm like, That's dude, good. I'm on. Beautiful. Yeah. Right. You mix in a birdie or two, but like 
you know, shit can happen out here. You can have par fives, get there in two, and do something fun. Well, it's good that we know we have no chance. At least I'll take a little bit of the I agree with that. How long is it? Is it like 6,500 yards? Yeah, it's not, it's not too long. Just get in the good grass. You yeah, know, the, good the rough's grass. a different... The, hey, keep so the course in front of you. Here at these greens would not... Would, that would be a fucking... Like, long always good round. is not good. Oh, just keep it... Maybe if you're in between oh, clubs, just take the shorter and keep the course right in front of you. All right. That's good advice. Sounds yeah. easy. What's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Kevin. We appreciate it, right, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank you for the time. Thanks Thank for stopping you guys. Us.